Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you out there in uh, Streamland. All one, two of you, Hi Bay and Candace, of course. For anybody who's watching this uh, after the fact, this is more for you. Uh, this is going to be session number 61 of the Wildlands campaign. We are going to dive straight into it here and try and figure out if our dear, dear adventuring group can um, identify the root cause of this blue rot disease and figure out a way to cure it before it either A, spreads, or B, kills someone. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive straight into it. Please remember that when we play D&D, I don't do a whole lot of chatting in the actual chat chat. Um, I do more chatting with my group chat. Um, so buckle up and prepare yourselves because this is going to probably be another weird one, which honestly most of the Wildlands campaign sessions have been weird ones. So no different than all the others. If you're interested, by the way, we did complete session number three last night of, uh, or excuse me, part three of our standalone module, which takes place in this world right around the same time that this group is adventuring called Nowhere to Run. Tonight is going to be part four and the finale, um, so long as our, our friend Chu Train's wife does not go into labor, uh, we will be running that tonight from 7 to 10 p.m. It will be the finale. I There's just the way that the content, that I've figured out the cadence of the group and the content, and there's no way that it'll go, well, I, I say that, I say there's no way it'll go past tonight. I'm almost positive there's no way it could possibly go past tonight. There's just too little uh, with what... I have in in the back pocket. So, 
Uh, join us for that. That'll be the conclusion of Nowhere to Run. And then tomorrow we will have D&D &D again from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. That will be on Nerdy Knots' stream. She is going to be running um, the, uh, the Boundless Valor campaign. Um, so, another weird weekend packed to the brim with D&D, &D, which is awesome. All right, without further ado, I'm going to dive back over to the uh, to the group here, so bear with me for one moment while I transition, and hey, Rose, welcome on in. You just missed my, uh, my big, uh, unimportant, and kind of boring speech, but welcome on in, and uh, we'll talk to you guys during our uh, break around the, around the noon hour. All right, here we go. All right, I suppose I'll join you all if I have to. Only if you have to. <laughs> so, first, hello. Hi. Second, I did an oops. Uh oh, what's the oops? I did Sybil off the uh, plane of roll twenty. I deleted myself. Jeez, Sybil went to the shadow dimension. Sybil got lost before the game even started. It was a little impressive. Um. Yeah, I don't, uh, let me, let me jump to another map really quick and see if I can grab, actually, you know what's hilarious, I think I deleted you from the other map I had you at before because I was gonna copy you over to this one. Sorry. Yeah, I sure did. Alright, well, you're gonna have to deal with not existing on here for a while. Because I don't have time to, uh, reset yep. all that stuff up, so. Yeah, no, totally fair. Sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, okay, so, uh, all right, uh, let's see here. Quick recap from last session. So this was July 2024, part one. So the group fought their way through the remaining undead, and when the skeletal sharks and infested whales arrived, they made surprisingly quick work of them, too. Though Gartok did almost end everything for everyone uh, after it, but we won't talk about that, right, Gartok? Um... So, after the fight, the group collected themselves and began making their way through the village, obtaining an ear leech, uh, which was very necessary for not just hearing, but speaking and all of the other things that uh, hamper you down here in the depths. And uh, then you guys decided to have a conversation with an old man who seemed like he was possibly on the verge of taking his own life, but thankfully Winnie, in all of her charismatic glory, was able to uh, talk him out of that. So they, you guys, eventually met with the chieftain, Nolaire, um, who partnered uh, with her forces that were currently at Fort Staghorn, uh, which is a fort that you guys actually liberated for Sea Whip um, from a, uh, an underwater demon many, many, many sessions ago. Uh, and you agreed, uh, and they agreed, excuse me, to remove, to move their remaining forces and villagers, which is not many, to the Raging Waves Flotilla, so long as it was alright with Dwendar the Tempest. They have not, nobody has received official word about that, but they are ready to move when you guys are. They claim that uh, they would work underwater uh, to uh, peel barnacles off of the bottom of their flotilla, as well as uh, make repairs for them. Uh, and then they would also offer you guys two harpoon ships and six what they referred to as spear rammers and riders for the collective fleet. The group then discovered that not one, but at least two of their dear friends had been infected with a necromantic disease called blue rot, which caused massive black and blue boils to suddenly manifest on their bodies. However, through loads of magic, they did manage to cure Sybil, uh, but looking to Gartok, they found themselves near tapped of resources for the day. So, we are picking up today. Uh, the session is 61, and it is Ogtet the first still at 12:30 p.m. Um, that is all I think I have for notes. Let me just double check something. I have the tiny additional note of we just gone back inside to be like, see, no blue rot with us. And then behind us. Yeah, Gartok is like, I've got the black lung pop. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll just take him out back. It'll be fine. Why, why did you say that the way you said that? She's exactly the way she said it. <laughs> She's like, I didn't stutter. 
<laughs> yeah, I've got two daggers and uh Oh my god. This is for gill hole number one, and the other just has Gartok's name on it. Y'all remember Y'all remember that the next time Sybil coughs. Okay. Sometimes I miss the doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. All right, guys. Um, that yeah, that is all I actually had for notes. So, does anybody have any questions, comments, clarifications? Um, just what what time is it now? Uh, twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. Thank you. I said that already. Sorry. Okay. So, um, with that being said, we'll just go ahead and kick it off. Um. So, to set the stage, you guys have uh, just uh, stepped back outside. Uh, Gartok started to cough, and as uh, Ulrich looked uh, to his right, he realized that he had indeed started to develop the same black and blue boils and was now rapidly uh, deteriorating uh, in front of you guys. Although, Gartok took a little bit less of, a, of an effect to this than uh, Sybil had, but he's still not doing great. So, what do you guys do? Um, so, when he, uh, I was, actually, I think I, was, I wanted to be out here. Um, I, she'll look at Ulrich. I can't braid her again. Can I? Neither can I. I will um, be, I'll... for the record, engaging the, uh, the, Tavern keep in generic small talk number three, so that we're less rude about running outside and the magic -y people can do their thing. Okay. Yeah, I knew you were in there. Um, actually, I can. Um, I can do it once more, but I can lesser more, and we have potions, so maybe we should start with that. At this point, yeah, let's. We have to try and get this fixed before too long. My question is, who's next? Because all of us are fighting those. All right, let me see. Um, she'll go to Gartok, and I'm going to cast uh, Lesser Restoration with my last third level spell slot. Okay, so you're casting Lesser Restoration at third level, third level yeah. which uh, doesn't do anything for Restoration, but <laughs> it's still, it's still, we, I understand. Okay, so you, uh, so you uh, whip up your incantation, and you reach out, and you, um, you touch Gartok. Go ahead. Oh, actually, you don't have to roll anything. Give me one sec. That's me. So, as you touch Gartok, um, he, you, you see the uh, the magic kind of ripples across his body, and you see some of the boils, um, mainly around like where his lymph nodes would be in his neck. Um, kind of pop and 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 retract a little bit. Gartok, you can restore one point of constitution. Arik, I think we're gonna have to go somewhere. We can. We'll make sure that we let the tavern keeper know. I mean, Arik, did I say Gartok? Um, I think we're gonna have to to teleport somewhere because we don't have the resources to handle this properly. They are obviously, they don't know enough about it to be comfortable with us being here. Okay. Let me dig that scroll out. I, the other option would be I can get us to the, um, I can plane shift us to, uh, no, I can't because I don't have, I don't have the uh, rod for it. Yeah, we'll have to use the scroll. Yeah, no, I mean, it's what it's here for, so. Where are Let's we going? We need to go somewhere that has the resources to help all of us, just assuming that all of us got this. Grove? Okay. Um, my only other thought was maybe we can... Um, maybe we can go speak with... Um, my brain just stopped working. Maybe we can go speak with... Um, the leader. Oh, no, Lair. 
Maybe we can go talk with Nolaire and see if she knows of anybody with the resources to help us before we leave. But... Yeah, I think we do it quickly as it with me and you since we're still fine so far. I don't... I don't know. I'm just expecting all of us to get it, so I want to get us somewhere where we can get treated. Is there a temple that we could go to of yours where you think they'd have the resources? The only one I know of is uh, like Motion Beak, so... Maybe it would be better to go. Let's go. Let's go talk with Nolaire first. Okay. Right Our talkers, here. stay here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you two uh, enter Nolaire's um, residence. Um, give me one sec. All right, so Nolair is there. Um, she is kind of partially hunched again. Remember, she's got like the seaweed straps underneath her arms, kind of helping keep her up. She looks out to you. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Please, uh, c come, come. A few good news from the flotilla. Um... Ark, did you hear back? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember if I actually sent the message or not. I don't remember if I did or not. Nope. Nobody d sent any messages. You guys no, left here and went straight to into trying to find yeah. lodging. Yeah. Uh, let me step out and do that real quick. Um. So he'll be back in momentarily. But I was actually coming in here to number one. Um... Uh, you got to speak into that mic, Candice. You're doing that thing again. Sorry, I just, I can't hear you. Number one, um, we have apparently, um, one of, not apparently, one or, or two or maybe more of us were inflicted by blue rot. Um, only one of us is showing signs right now, and we were able to cure the other. I didn't know if you had anybody down here. I, I know resources are scarce, but is there anyone down here that can help? Otherwise, we are going to get out of here before it starts to hit all of us so that not causing a panic. Oh, Blue Rot. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, those of us who were infected with it were sent into the kelp forests to die. Uh, we don't know much about it or where it came from, though we surmise it was from the dead. And unfortunately, when Wave Spanner Surge perished, so too did all of our healing resources. Do you know much about Blue Rot? Um, Ulrich said he believes that it can only be transferred through lights um, and that kind of thing, but. We don't know much about it, which is why those infected were sent to perish alone and away from the rest of the community. Understood. Well, uh, Ulrich will reach out and let you know what he hears, and then we may be departing to get healed, but we can come back, uh, possibly tomorrow, to help with getting everybody to the flotilla, if needed. Oh, we are very good at traversing underneath the waves. I don't think there will be any need for that. Plus, if what we hear is true from Staghorn, we'll be bringing two harpoon ships and the remainder of our riders. There are literally only about two dozen of us left here within the confines of this village. Understood. Well, I will let Ulrich deliver the news to you, and um, we will more than likely get the leeches out and then depart so that we can be treated. Thank you so much for everything, and um, hopefully, hopefully we'll be seeing you in just a couple days. Hopefully we'll be there when you get there. Yes, please, just if those of you that are feeling ill... Please keep them separated from what remains of my guardsmen. Absolutely. She'll kind of like bow and excuse herself. Just step out. Okay. Uh, while that was happening, Ulrich. Oops. 
Sorry, planning out the message. To no start problem. Over. Okay, so sending a uh, message to Dwendar. Um, secured aid of Sea Whip, but they have been attacked by undead. They are coming and will assist with repairs with the flotilla in exchange for safety. Okay. Uh, and this is a... Is it a third level spell? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So you, the message goes out. You feel it successfully connect. And you receive a response. <clears throat> uh, actually... Okay. Yes, you can receive a response. I was just making sure you weren't one of the one <laughs> you weren't one of the ones that was wearing a fucking divination protection pendant. <laughs> nope, I never had one. <laughs> Thank goodness. At least somebody can be contacted. All right. So you receive a response. You feel the familiar static kind of uh, ripple through your mind, and you hear, "Well, not sure what Merfolk eat, but if." They're willing to work. Yes, please send them send them our direction, especially if they have resources that we can utilize against the dead. And then I'll step back in and let them know that uh, I've spoken with the flotilla and is in exchange for work and repairs, they're definitely more than willing to have you amongst their collective. Uh, oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, say, could you send one of my guardsmen in? I'm going to need a message to Staghorn to pull the trigger on moving resources. Absolutely. Go. I'll go poke a random guard. Be like, she she needs a message sent out. So. Oh well. Um. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So she enter or er, the uh, guardsman enters, and uh, that's that. All right. Um, so Winnie would go over to Gartok, um, and kind of motion Emig to come over. Emig, as you begin to make your way over there, one of the guardsmen uh, in the center here who is, like, gathering shit up, he kind of puts his hand out to you and he says, um, excuse me, wave brother. And he says, he uh, kind of pulls out this small bundle. It looks like a, looks like a blue cloak kind of, like, wrapped up in, in a, like, in a satchel almost. And he kind of offers it up to you. We found this on their spellcaster. Um, it doesn't belong to us. This was not our fight, so uh, you and your group would probably benefit more. Thank you for your honesty in that matter, brother. And I will, uh, as graciously as a Goliath like <laughs> me can, accept the, uh, accept the bundle. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you feel a few things kind of bumbling around inside the bundle, and just to give you an idea of the cloak itself, um, as soon as you touch it, it, even in this underwater environment, feels dry to the touch. It's very, very strange when it touches your fingertips. Um, that is the cloak that is uh, in, within the bundle. Well, <laughs> we may have missed that. Alright. So you guys reconvene around Gartok. Um, all right, so I think we should go, because we're only going to cause a panic in the tiny population that still exists here. Um, we were talking about possibly going back to the grove. I don't want to show up on the flotilla. I don't know how you, how they would handle seeing that, and show motion towards Gartok, um, looking at Emig. Emig's kind of like uh, looking at this bundle he's got. Sorry, what? <clears throat> uh, she'll kind of look at that and shake it off. Um, I'm assuming we shouldn't show up back at the flotilla with one or more of us looking like this. She'll motion to Gartok again. Uh, the way we live, we probably shouldn't, even if it's not contagious. Uh... Best to get rid of this somewhere else, I think. 
Okay, so maybe, um, maybe we can head back to the grove. I don't know that anybody there, um, can, can, I don't know where their, he their resources are at at this point either after healing our soldiers, but at least it's home and we can kind of figure that out. I've really, because like, like I said, we said before, rest can help, but just, you know, being in the grove itself, it's a little bit more of a fortified place, fortified must more perhaps, maybe easier to fight it off, give us a little bit, and being able to actually rest knowing where we're safe might help it as well. Mind can heal the body as just as well as it can itself. That's true. All right. Uh, does anybody oppose to going back to? Uh, or can you send a message again, Auric, or Are you out of that capability? No, I'm still good. Because we should probably let Falcona know when we show up. We need to get in in the habit of warning people before we. Right. No, I was actually already thinking about that. The problem being, it may not work because it's a different plane. Right. There's a chance that it might not, but I can give it a shot. Okay. I'll let her know and then let her know that there is a... With us incoming is also a situation as per normal. Okay, so you conjure your, uh, your um, sending spell. You inform Falcona that uh, you guys will be incoming and that there is a... Once I again. will mention Blue Rot in case she she might know about it as well. Oh, that's a good fucking question. Let me see if she does. Okay, uh, noted on my end. So, um, so you receive a response from Falcona. Um, uh, actually, hang on. Uh, it's another plane of existence. Uh, high or low? Low worked last time. You got lucky. You got lucky. It was a 5% chance that you fail, and you got lucky by 1%. So you have trouble. You feel the static a little bit more. It's like it's like back in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s, all the way through the 2000s, depending on just how poor you grew up, because trust me, I was there. When you had to smack the fucking antenna in the side of the TV to get the, uh, to get the, the point. It, Lucy knows... He's from Africa. Uh, okay, so <laughs> so you you feel like the the static just doesn't tilt enough in the right direction, and finally you find the one path, and you shoot that message off as fast as you can. Yeah, and it, it's like okay, got it. Uh, you do receive a response from Falcona, and she says, "Oh, thank you for warning me. I'm not accustomed to that from you. Thank you." We'll prepare for Blue Rot. Hey, it worked. She, she is also shocked that we warned her. So we're, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> I'm shocked we warned her, if I'm being honest. All right. Um, Look, I have it written on the back of my hand. Be better about teleporting, okay? Like. Okay, well, we also are dealing with Blue Rot, so make sure you're washing your hands. Um, if you're ready, then... We're, we're in water. We're constantly washing our hands. And you don't have anything written on your hands. Permanent ink. It's tattooed. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I guess uh, let's get the leeches out before we leave. She'll look over at Sybil as she says that. Sybil's not there. She's still Right, inside. she's inside. Yeah, and the door I'm presuming is shut so she doesn't see boil Gartok. Not anymore. I'm going to peek in, or step in, I guess, and I will um, look to the innkeeper and say I picture, Unfortunately... Sorry, totally interrupting. I picture she's like mid-story about some stupid thing that we ended up doing. It doesn't even matter what. It, it could be any number of things. It's like, and then Bloodmane just dove for the set of... It's, 
so the door opens next to you, and uh, Winnie, make um, make an insight check. Eighteen. So the door opens, and through the barrier, you can hear Sybil just, and then he did this, and then that happened, and then you won't believe. How, I mean, the cut was so deep, it might as well have bled out as immediately. And this woman is chopping this, like, weird, almost like hybrid radish potato thing. And you see she's looks over to you. Uh, I, un unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut your story short, Sybil. We are actually going to, um, as much as we'd like to stay tonight, we're going to head back. We want to make sure everybody's good rather than staying here and potentially letting something become an issue. Um, uh -oh. we, we appreciate your hospitality as always, and, I, and we will be seeing you soon. Oh, oh, all right. She looks down at the now probably foot and a half high pile of fresh vegetables she's been cutting for this stew what for I extra people. And she goes, well, I suppose. Could I pay you for those and take some take our share with me? Of course. I'll eat that. Wonderful. Um, you might want to cook them. Uh... But yes, uh, sure, of course, yes, this, of, this was the plan all along, I assume. Uh, she opens up this kind of like uh, pseudo-dried, kind of more like cured, like a leather-cured seaweed sack, and she begins to scoop the potatoes into it. She'll put them up there, and she will say, um, how does two silver sound? Best I can do is four. I'll give her. I'll give her. Don't a take my thing. <laughs> I only get to PC so much. I started much. laughing as soon as I thought it. Um, I'll give her. I will give her four silver though. Okay, she takes the four silver, and then you can add uh, a sack of of sea potatoes, and uh, it weighs, we'll say, six pounds. Okay. Chopped sea potatoes. Sea taters. Yep. Marcus does it better. C cedar tots. <laughs> Ew. Shame. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, so, yeah, so go ahead. So you guys, yeah, so uh, she hands you the sack. She turns around and she just kind of like puts the knife down and she continues to stir what was already being cooked. Okay, perfect. And um, she'll, so she'll say before she steps out, she'll say, I'm truly looking forward to getting to eat your food again, um, for real. And I hope to do that soon. And then she'll pop out, and she's gonna grab Sybil like by the sleeve and drag her out with her. Hey, yep, and he goes with. All right, so there you find yourselves back in the open waters of Sea Whip. Gartok is, is going. Coughing. Oh, we gotta go. We gotta go. Let's go get the um, leeches out. Uh, actually, um, I I will turn to Gartok. Um, since I know that we're going somewhere where we could potentially long rest, and I'm going to use my 7th level spell slot to cast Greater Restoration on him, because it's my last one I can do that with. Okay. So... I I'd like to think that as you pop out, um, Gartok is both coughing, and then when he's not coughing, um, he's just kind of like looking at the stuff all over him, and just poking the things on his hands to be like, what is this? And who has the material components for this? I do. I'm going to take it out of the bag of holding. Okay. So what is it? A hundred gold worth of diamond yeah, dust? Yeah, of diamond dust. I believe okay. that's our last one too, but I'm going to double. Yeah, that's our last one. Okay. So you take the remaining sack of the diamond dust. You kind of turn it over in your hand and the diamond particles fall into your, into your palm. You whisper the incantation um, into your hand, and as you sprinkle the dust over Gartok, it kind of hits his skin and with a kind of a dramatic sizzle starts to pop these boils as it moves down. Um, as it does so, Gartok, you have officially been cured. You did not have this anywhere near as bad as Sybil did, and this greater restoration removes the remaining three points of charisma and one point of constitution damage you took. I love it when it's worth it. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get these leeches out before one of us gets sick, and let's get out of here before we cause a oh, panic. Wait, hang on. Are we planning on coming back here? Yes, but I don't know when, and I'm not risking having my brain explode. 
she, if you can see, is the, like, consider, oh, yep, 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 nope, no kind of expression. Before we continue, if I, if I can voice concern, are they evacuating soon, like tonight, or do we know yet? I don't feel right necessarily leaving them when we might not be contagious. We can go somewhere and wait, but they said that the frequency of attacks was mm, frequent. <laughs> we don't know if we got rid of everybody. I would hate to uh, never have them show up at the flotilla. I agree. Alric, uh, did, was that discussed when you, when you spoke with... I know she said she was going to send a message to to quote unquote pull the trigger to get the forces here to leave or they're going to I'm not sure I did not get that information okay um, more word about Gartok yeah we can we can verify that uh, or Emig if you if you'd like to whatever you want to do I believe she was using one of her guardsmen to send the message I saw Alric send them in um, so maybe they know I mean, we've got, you know, some sitting, we got a couple minutes, minutes at least of sitting time while they yank leeches out of our ears. So if you want to go do that while the rest of us are getting de-leached. Okay, um, I can, I can talk or Ema can, however. I can speak with Mother Nolair. That's not a problem. Thank you. Uh, I'm still holding this bundle. Ulrich, uh, maybe you want to look at this. The good, honest people of Sea Whip, uh gave this to us from those that we re-killed. Yeah, I could actually use that wand we picked up. Then I'll pop the wand of magic detection. Okay. So you pop the wand of magic detection and the uh, so it, so the, the bundle as you kind of take the bundle, you guys open it up and inside so there are um, there are four vials of some sort of disgusting looking um, kind of like almost metallic it's like a metallic blue and black mixing with each other um, but staying completely separate um, th those are all in their own separate vials um, and then obviously the cloak the vials uh, do um, do come up magic uh, as well as the, um, as well as the, uh, cloak. The cloak emanates with, um, abjuration magic. And all four vials emanate with necromancy. Going to stake a bet that those are four vials of blue rot. And, uh... Somebody bottled that shit? Well, they're, I'm betting they were using it as, like, a poison coating, possibly. No, and he looks right at Sybil. Well, Sybil's just like, I, her expression goes to, uh, a little bit of disgust. So like, I, I do have some standards. Good. But the Not many, breaker. but that is many of them. I'm going to bet that that big SOB is immune to disease, but, you know. Either way, I say we just ditch these somewhere where they can't be busted open and, you know, infect the waters and get everyone here killed. And... Do I know anything about safe poison disposal? Ha! <laughs> uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. No, I, I, there was an internal struggle. Um, <laughs> why don't we, um... What's the plan B besides put it in the person? Yeah, right, right. Uh, why don't we go ahead and have you roll a, a survival check? I think poison disposal is probably in the realms of survival and keeping those around you alive. Or not. This is also a disease, so it might be a little different. I looked at my character sheet. This is going to go so well. We can go back to laughing out loud here in a second. That is not as bad as I was expecting. No, that's definitely not as bad as I was expecting either. Um, so, so as far as actual poison disposal is concerned, you know, the way of the wilds tells you to just find somewhere that is not a water source uh, and dump it i.e. dig a little hole in the ground and pour it out, especially if it's in small doses and you just don't ever have to worry about it again. You don't have to think about it. Uh, big doses, 
Obviously, you may want to consider utilizing some sort of alchemical um, substance that can that can um, nullify the poison's effects. Specific poisons have specific things that they can be coated or you know mixed with to kill the effects. Um, the other option would be like through divine magic. You know, you could uh, essentially take a poison and perform a restoration into it and it technically nullifies the poison because it would do the same if it was in your body um on the flip side you're not entire you don't know enough about blue rot to know how to handle it you don't know if it is actually classifies it classified as a poison a disease or both however you do know that you have successfully done research in the past and if you wanted to attempt to research it all you would need to do is study and mess with the vial a little bit well i mean obviously the poison in the vial but or whatever it happens to be disease whatever and you could potentially glean some information so, as Sybil has a moment of introspection, it's, especially with what this is, it may not be as simple as the usual for disposing of it. Um, normally I would say, you know, dig a hole, dump it. I would be a little worried that if this tends to have more necromantic backed disease elements to it, it may spread and corrupt the earth around it which would be awful. Um, we might be able to, well, <laughs> we, you, you two, looks directly at Ulrich and Winnie, might be able to just nullify it, uh, sink some magic directly into the vials. Otherwise, if we don't get rid of them, and I'm not gonna look at any of you because I know what looks I'm going to see, and I mess with it a little bit, I may be able to work out a way to counter it directly. This isn't, it's an arcane disease. It's not a poison. It's real. like, this is a magically manufactured thing. So I don't know it. I don't know if your normal means of study would even be effective without some sort of an arcane background. I have no idea, but I can think of exactly one way to find out. Um, and if I look at it and go, yeah, I have no idea, then you sink some magic into it and we nullify it. All right. Well, let's get out of here because we're just start getting some leeches out of our head. That is a sentence that I will never get used to. All We've right. only had to say it twice, so. I have <laughs> only really heard it once. Technically. The rest of it was masked by... Not so muffled screams. All right, so you guys make your way back over towards, um, towards, uh, oh, what the hell was the name of her shop? I know I had something fancy. No, I didn't. It was literally just the apothecary. Boy, that's fucking lame. You know, I came up with kelp me, kelp you, but I couldn't do anything for the alchemist. Real nice, Kevin. Okay, uh, so you guys go back over to the alchemist, and, uh, the, the door is open. Um, partially open. You guys breach the barrier and enter. And there before you is Tong... Uh, not, excuse me, not Tongal. It's uh, Jordoon. <clears throat> back uh, so soon. Yes, it would seem we are going to be heading back up to the surface um, sooner than we thought. So uh, we actually probably need to have these removed as I would rather not risk... <laughs> accidentally being gone too long and having an issue. Oh. Oh. Thought you were going to be here for much longer. Seems kind of a, a waste of these little buggers, but that's all right. Um, yep, go ahead and file in and lay your heads down. I'll get them out for you. I'll uh, poke my head out, assuming you guys follow in or not. Boy, yeah, I mean, I'll come back to you with that convo in just a sec. I think Gorjak, who has no social graces, would be right behind you, not kidding. Okay. With, like, the stuff would falling off. <laughs> Basically, I was just making sure there was nobody having second thoughts about leaving. So, as long as everybody followed, then I think we're fine. Okay. If it's, any, if it's any consolation, we did think we were staying longer as well. So, things okay. are just progressing a little rapidly. No, no, we that's all right. We should probably clarify, there is a good chance that we will be back, but... And back in relatively soon, but if something 
delays us for any reason. We would rather not have these in our heads growing. That's a pretty fair point. It's rather atrocious when they reach uh, full development. It just your skulls cannot contain what Can they we become. Reimburse you for these in some way? She says with a side eye to Winnie because she definitely doesn't have the purse. She blinks kind of heavy a few times and she says, Actually, kind of a strange request. Uh, coin right now is unfortunately our trade allies have all but vanished in the past few weeks. Is there any chance you could spare just a couple of common healing potions in case anybody around here gets injured? My stocks are pretty much tapped. Just a couple, just something to maybe hold us over. Yes. Without a second thought, I'll take out two from the bag of holding, the regular potions of healing. Look around at the group and make sure everybody's okay with it, and then, as long as nobody's opposed, hand them over. Yep. Okay, so she takes, in a very, uh, what seeming to your guys' power source is, or power level is, she takes the two mundane healing potions and looks, I mean, clutches them to her chest. Thank you so much. This... I, you understand that this could literally be the difference between life and death should we be attacked again. So I do. I, That's... I greatly appreciate it. I wish we could do more. Um, I will keep that in mind and try to do more as we get come across more resources. Thank you. Um, she kind of stashes the, the healing potions in a, in a little uh, pouch on her side. And then as you lay down, you guys uh, notice she takes... Um, so for, there's the clay jar uh, off to the side with the leeches. And then next to that, there's like a little... Um, almost like a... Um, almost looks like a pot that they would bury kimchi in. Um, kind of like a clay pot with the top kind of uh, on, but like sealed with like like some sort of weird paper or algae. It pops the top on that, and inside there's a clay ladle. And as um, you lay your head down, Winnie, she comes back over, and she kind of does the few drips of whatever the icker, the liquid is, into your ear. Um, there is this scram immediate scrambling in your brains as or in your head as something physically is moving around and struggling. And she goes in with a pair of tweezers and pulls out a very, very gray now uh, instead of the black looking leeches before and dead leech. Um, she will, for the sake of brevity, brevity, repeat this process on the four of you. While that is happening, let's go to Bloodmain. Bloodmain, so you approach the two guardsmen that are now posted up outside of um, Noel Ayer's uh, residence. They kind of, uh, they kind of uh, put their, their spears to the side. Uh, the one that you had received the uh, bundle from, he kind of looks at you questioningly, watching everybody walk towards the alchemist. Is that something you need? Yes, see, brother. I want to know what the timeline is for evacuation of Sea Whip. He looks at the guy next to him, and the soldier, or the uh, guardsman nods, and he says, I spoke with the captains at Fort Staghorn myself, and uh, it would appear that they should be here within the next couple of hours. They were mustering all forces anyways to assist against this last onslaught and to provide us with reinforcements, so it shouldn't be much longer. As far as gathering ourselves, if I may speak plainly, we don't have much <laughs> here anymore. And there are not many of us. Um, thankfully, the healthy outweigh those that are sick and feeble, so we should be leaving, I would assume, no longer than within the next few hours, as packing ourselves should take all but an hour, maybe. Good, thank you for that. Uh, how often were you attacked by these waves of the undead? Will a few hours be enough, or... Do you think that you'll need assistance during that time? Historically, it was only once every couple of days, um, and it was never as intense as it was this time around. Honestly, we'd seen those bulbousy creatures, the the humanoid-looking ones, a few times, but they only came in ones and twos. Unfortunately, it's the disease or whatever it was that 
was spreading amongst us that was the real killer. Um, we saw the skeletal sharks once or twice. The whales never seen that before. Um, but this was the most intense attack. And the last time before this was... Looks at the other guard and he says, Two? And he says, No, oh, I think it was more like three days ago. And before that it was another three. Maybe, maybe three and a half. Understood. Uh, if I may continue to ask uh, a few questions. It is my understanding that Wave Spanner Surge is no longer with us. They both immediately look kind of somber, and you see their heads kind of look down, and the guard who had given you the bundle looks up and he says, Yes. He fought bravely. And he did things that we couldn't believe, that we did not realize he was capable of doing before he fell. But even one as strong as he fell, unfortunately, to this disease. He had tapped himself completely of resources before he had a chance to realize what had happened and thankfully he saved at least eight of us during that fight sacrificing everything else he had to fend off the undead um this was probably close to a week ago uh, maybe a, a week and a half ago um he died valiantly and wildly he shed his skin grew the fins and the teeth of a shark and just tore through the ranks of the dead. It was very impressive. Was he honored uh, properly? Unfortunately, <clears throat> we are not entirely sure where his body went because when he realized he was infected with the blue rot and with no resources to heal himself, he took to the seas. I believe Nolair received a message um, from him moments before his death, thanking her for her years of dedication and service to our people. And when she attempted a reply, there was no connection. I see. Thank you for that. Has anybody taken up Wake Spanner Surge's <clears throat> mantle? Uh, or is the temple uh, empty at this point? The temple is still technically intact. Um, I believe he was wearing his mantle during the battle, and I believe he left with it. Um, however, you're more than welcome to pilfer the temple, if you're interested, you can more than no. welcome to have a look around. No, 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 no. That was not my meaning. This is not always my best language. Uh, Mantle, his <clears throat> position, his position, taking his role. Ah, uh, yes, I understand. Um, no, there are no others in the village with divine connection, unfortunately. Mm, that saddens me. I am very sorry to hear of the brother's passing. But Us thank you too. for telling me. Yes. And thank you for your service. Not once, but twice to our people. And now potentially buying us continued existence with the flotilla. We greatly appreciate that. I think the flotilla will greatly appreciate you. The good thing about a people's as small as us, in number anyways, is that at this point we have nothing left to lose. And we promise, even us lowly guardsmen, let alone those that have actual military training who will be here soon, we'll fight with the ferocity of 50 sharks apiece, I promise you, when it comes time. That is a lot of <coughs> sharks. A lot of sharks. <clears throat> I'll uh, go to do the clasp and uh, walk to rejoin the party. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. 
they reach out. They both kind of give you um, their own their own um, clasp and shake. And uh, you see, for the first time in that conversation, they both, uh, as you walk away, they both are smiling. <clears throat> Take it. All right, so, uh, Bloodmane, you enter, uh, you enter the alchemist shop just in time to catch, uh, Gartok, get the, uh, the grayed leech pulled from his ear, uh, Sybil, Winnie, and Ulrich kind of have their fingers in their ear, kind of getting the rest of the muck and slime and shit out, um, she takes the, uh, the dead, uh, leech and, um, puts it over to the side, she pats you kind of, uh, along the, uh, the, the top fin, Gartok, and she says, all right, dear. You're all set. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, as um, as she pulls out the leech uh, and is like in front of Gartok, he's like staring at it the whole time. Um, it's not interest. It's definitely hunger. <laughs> but he's not going to eat it because when he said no, don't eat things. Uh, <laughs> but he uh, as she like pats his um, frills, they're like uh, kind of, I guess, flat. Is a good way to indicate. Okay, she um she doesn't seem to necessarily understand it. Although you know what they do, they have fins too. So maybe she does seem to understand a little bit. You know, I'm gonna roll a die. Hang on, I'm curious. Okay, she um so she uh she kind of uh. She kind of nods, and then um, as you stand up to, uh, to, to move away, she looks at Bloodmane, who just entered. I believe it's your turn. Uh, before I get these removed, Winnie, did you want to check in with your druid friend, uh, Tongel? Yeah, I thought about that as well. Um, I could do that. I could try to swim over there quickly and see what he's doing I'll just it, it might hurt me a little bit but um, I'll put my hood up and the the temple if we have time I'd like to visit it before we leave uh, I don't think we'll be back because everybody else is leaving and they should be gone uh, within the next few hours I was assured which makes me feel better about that. We won't be leaving anybody behind, necessarily, to whatever fate has in store for them. Yeah. Okay. Fate. So, all right, so what are you doing? Um, so, when Emig's, uh, getting, when he's getting his, uh, leech room, well, did you guys want to come with to go speak with the Archdruid down here? I figure we stick together. Okay, so once he's done, then it, we just need to make it quick because now we don't have the. Uh, we're back under the pressure of the water. Um, and Kevin, just for clarification, inside of here is the it's the. You guys are breathing air. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's like there's some sort of you're not sure if it's magical, supernatural, alchemical, but something has created barriers along the interior of all of these structures, and it is air. Okay. It's, I mean, with the leeches gone, it's going to be a very one-sided conversation. You're barely going to be able to hear it, and then we have to get back here because we need to be in dry to cast. I guess he is going to the flotilla. I could just speak to him there. Plus, what if it's, what if it's, yeah, yeah it might be better to get out of here sooner than later. Can you send a message to him and see what he would prefer? Maybe he could come here. Maybe he could say we could talk later. Up to all work of his um, magic getting used. We are leaving and going to rest so we can recover before this fully. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about sticking around longer than we have to. That's fine. It's fine. Um, would I be able to afterwards? Would I be able to leave a message? Uh, I want to make sure I say it right. Sentinel Zal. No, that's that's the tavern keeper. Right? Uh, who are you? Who are you addressing? Um, I'm I'm talking to the uh, the woman that takes care of the leeches, but I have her. Jordoon. Jordoon, yeah. <clears throat> um, Jordoon, would I be able to leave a message here for Tongal? 
Uh, does he come here at all? No. You can leave a message if you'd like, but Tongal has receded into the crevices of the shadows of his sanctum, and we have not seen him present in weeks. We know he still lives, as we see his shadow flitting around at night, but he's a deeply troubled individual. But so I'm told, such is the way of those with sorceress origins that have no mentor, no guide, nobody to show them the way. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, his magic has manifested in ways that are leading us to believe that he has ties to the shadow fell and I think it greatly worries him she'll turn when he will turn to Alric and say would you be able to send him a message just saying that he should move with the rest of his clan because we may have someone that can help him with his powers if you remember how we how we first came into contact with our sorcerer friends, Mylar and Ezekiel. Um, that was what Mylar did, was he, he taught. I can. There's nobody that should be left so hopeless in already pretty hopeless world, and I would hate to leave him in the depths here. Yep, I can do that. Let me double check before I make myself a liar. Okay. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> Alright, so you conjure up a, another sending spell. Go ahead and just let me know what you would like to say. You can let him know that it's from like, the Archdruid of the Circle of the Shepherd, and hopefully he'll remember. That's a lot of words adding on there. Hold on, give me a second. Just say Winnie. He'll either remember me or That's not. Good. Sorry about that for those of you in stream who just had to hear that. I was just, I actually forgot to test my shit before I started, so. Like, what the fuck was that? Ooh, 25 on the dot. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, casting sending. The message will be, uh, Winnie, the Archdruid of the, of the Shepherd, wants you to know you should leave with your people. We have someone to teach you about your magic. Sorry, say that one more time. Winnie, the Archdruid of the Shepherd, wants you to know you should leave with your people, and we have someone to teach you about your magic. Okay. Uh, you feel the spell activate, successfully send. You, there is a, um, a static that kind of builds in your mind. Um, Ulrich, and you hear a voice kind of emanate uh, across the uh, the sending spells network. You should not be here. And the spell <laughs> fades. Oh, he's not in a good place. Well, hopefully he 
allows Mylar to help him. If not, then that's something I can tackle. After I don't think he's going to leave. All I got back was you should not be here. Oh. Well... I will fight that battle when we are healthy. Okay. And it's probably better we didn't go straight over there, I guess. She looks really um, defeated right now. <laughs> Just kind of stands ready to be teleported. All right. Point. Begins to sweat profusely. As we are right on the hour mark. And as you begin to sweat profusely, um you feel a churning sensation in your stomach. And as you look to the rest of the group, as you're all having this conversation, you guys see, much like what happened to Gartok, as he is also covered in scales, there is a sudden burst of, of gray that kind of comes over his, his skin or his scales. They dull almost to a mat and boils begin to swell up on his face, hands, arms. Um, Jordoon her eyes go wide as she backs into her table. You hear bottles kind of clanking off the table. Ulrich, you are at a minus four constitution and a minus four charisma until further notice. Uh, Jordoon says, Oh, shit. You need to leave. leave. Yes, he's going to cast a spell to get us out of here. Ulrich, can you still do it? I believe so. Let's hope so. Let's go, God. Uh, or go in, grab the teleport scroll, like not even hesitating, and just get us out of here. Okay. Uh, I need to get my leeches out. <laughs> no, he did. I thought, didn't you already get it out? No, no. because oh. he was having the conversation before all that happened. Oh, I thought he did. So nope. then. Yeah, I'd wait until for sure we. Maybe just step outside for a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so Ulrich steps nasty. outside, sick as shit. Bloodmane, you lay down. Jordoon kind of walks over and she looks at you. Are, are you all sick? No. Can you please take these leeches out, Jordoon? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, and she dips the, the ladle into the pot and kind of handshaking, splashes some of the ichor on your face. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Uh, kind of goes over to the ear, drops it into the ear, places the, the dipper back into the clay pot, closes it, and then as you feel the kind of scrambling and wriggling in your ear, she goes in with the tweezers and she pulls the uh, dead leech out. Um, I would follow... Um since we have the second to do it, I would follow uh, Ulrich outside, and I would cast um, Lesser Restoration on him. Okay. Just to try to help with getting us the fuck out of here. So that's going to be with a fourth level spell slot. Alright, Ulrich, you regain... As she uh, performs the incantation on you, you guys see... Some of the more disfiguring boils um, kind of subside and shrink. Uh, you regain a one point of charisma. <clears throat> Okie dokie. All right. I don't know how to actually change it on roll 20, so I'm just tracking it in notes. Okay. Uh, on D and D Beyond, if you just click on your score, you can just say uh, score modifier. Yeah. You can override the score to be whatever it's supposed to be. Yeah. You can, there's other modifiers a tab, and you say negative four. I uh, see it now. I'm yeah. dumb. I actually I just changed your charisma, so you can just you can alter it how you need to. All right. Okay, so, what are you guys doing? We're waiting for um, Emic to get his... Yep, it's finished. Yeah. It's okay. Um, Thank you, we... Jordoon. I'll wipe the ichor off my face and just kind of wipe it on my pants. It's fine. She kind of... Oh, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't expecting that manifestation. I wish I would have known. I've had worse, so have we. And we will be on our way. Um... Do we need to be inside for you to do this, Ulrich? All right. No, was not. this was this down? Oh, I don't know if we can. 
Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a two by three, so you only have five people. Did this have the barrier in there as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. every building has it. Okay, that's what I thought. So um, why don't we go down to this building here and um, cast it in there so we're not disturbing anybody else? I'll talk to the individual outside before we just walk right past him. Okay. You approach the guard. And, yes. Um, I'm sure you've heard some of the commotion already. We need to take our leave so that we can get some much needed rest uh, before we return. Would you mind if we use this building here for a moment for them to cast the rituals? It's not my building. And everyone who lived here before is dead, so it's all yours. And having asked, she'll nod her thanks. He didn't freak out when Ulrich walked past, so... He watched him, too. He looked at him, and he was just like, Okay, this this is fine. Uh, I was... Sorry, Sybil, I thought you were done. Um, nope, you're good. Uh, as Gartok walks out of the... Shredoon's building, he's just gonna wave, and then leave... She she looks pretty she looks a little on the panic side seeing somebody just manifest blue rot without so much as a word um so she kind of like good luck we need fix and then he'll leave <laughs> all right so you guys all enter this building there's a there's a bunch of hammocks in here um, that are stacked three high um, there's a small dresser on the side. There's enough space for you to really tightly squeeze into this thing. Uh, this was not meant for people like, uh, Winnie and Bloodmane, so. Or Gartok. He's pretty big. Uh, okay, so, uh, what are you, what, what would you like to do? Uh, gonna use a 7th level scroll to teleport us to the group. Okay, perfect. So, you are familiar with the place. Um. I have a is... piece of it. That is true, you do have a piece of it, which is even better. Actually, you know what's even better than that? Uh, I think we had identified, because you're, are, are you targeting the gate, or are you just going into like the center of the grove? Uh, I'll target the gate, because I know it's like the easiest point between. Okay, perfect, so then you don't even need to roll for it, it's 100% chance of success. So, um, okay, so you, uh, you pull the scroll out, you read aloud the incantation, and as you do so, um, you guys see a flash of sigils, um, kind of in an arch shape, uh, manifest before you. There is a whoosh of air, and you see approaching you quickly through the ether and through the nether as you're pulled through it is the uh, what appears to be the interior of the grove's uh, sanctity. So let me go ahead real quick here. All right, and the spell, the scroll crumbles into dust as it is uh, consumed. However, you do find yourselves safely back in the recesses of the grove. Um, you guys, it is a very short walk to the, uh, to the grove center, the heart of the grove, as it were. And here you find yourselves. Um, where are you guys going? I'm gonna go lay down. Yeah, I think, I think that's. I would escort him just to make sure he doesn't collapse or something weird. Get him to a good place to rest. Okay. So, as you guys enter, um, Falcona is currently inside. Just a reminder of who you're talking to here. So you find Falcona inside the uh the central uh living quarters and as you enter she kind of looks over notices Ulrich, and her eyes kind of go sad and she says oh this is not good i'll see if i can muster any resources to assist in your speedy recovery 
Thank you, Falcon. We may need resources for everybody. We're not sure who all was inflicted. Um, they were under siege, underwater, and the undead that we fought were quite nasty. Uh, greater restoration seemed to help. Lesser does too, but obviously to a lesser extent. She nods, and as she steps into the uh, the living barrier, the vines and and trees of the uh, of the um, hut that you guys are in, or the building you are in, her uh, she does vanish. When you'll kind of tend to Ulrich and help him just get in the most restful position possible, and um, she's gonna just kind of sit and wait, I think, just to keep an eye on him. Since he's the first one that we're not just pumping full of all the restorations we have. Okay. While I'm laying in bed, I'm going to use the pearl to get myself a third level spell back. And then I'm going to, while I'm laying in bed, cast Beacon of Hope. And put all the healing that I have left in uh, spell slots into myself. So I'll just do the math because it's maximized. So I'm not rolling a ton of dice. Okie dokie. So Alric lays down, he looks kind of sickly, he pulls out the pearl, and as he holds it to his chest, there's a flash of light as the energy kind of ripples through his body. He then begins to um, uh, very fervently whisper prayers into his self as he, as he rocks ever so slightly, coughing once in a while with a boil popping and dripping the disgusting black and blue slime down his face. Um... He is currently there. What is the re what are the rest of you guys doing? And by the way, who took the uh, who has the cloak and those vials? I do. Oh, lovely. Lovely. If he's holding those, I probably would have taken those when he's laying down. I wouldn't have been snuggling that shit. Yeah, they're kind of uh, they're as you take it. There's like almost like a like a greasiness, like a sweatiness to them um, from all of the boils that have popped and and drained onto it. Yeah, but it's not, I mean, it's just disgusting. Yeah, I'll, I'd lay them out like, I don't know, on the floor over here or something and just let that dry out. Okay, all right. So what would you uh, guys like to do? I think Gartok would probably like eat for a bit, but he's eating probably less than usual, um, which is still a lot. <laughs> but I think uh, in his small brain, he's busy doing the, the forbidden thing of thinking. Um, but he's really struggling until, in his own head, empty head, uh, two brain cells clap together, and um, he gets an idea. And then eventually he's going to try and go where he lost Saul Barducio, Barducio, um, uh Hoping he's still there. Uh, Alright, so, uh, you enter... I fucking love this guy's portrait. Uh, so, 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 so yeah, you enter, you enter the, uh, the sanctum of Brodicio, and he is sitting in, like, the same exact fucking spot that you had seen him, uh, before. Looks like he's moved around a little bit. Baleta is on the table, um, and she is got a small, kind of dirty-looking hemp cloth in her hand that's, that's wet. She got a little bowl next to her, and she is polishing coins. Uh, Brodicio looks up and he says, Ah! Hello, my friend. Welcome back. I didn't expect to see you so quickly. Let me get the voice one second. <laughs> hi. Yes, hi, hello. Is there something I can do for you? Or maybe Baleta, you come for just a little pet? You look at like the weasel. <laughs> um, sorry. It's an it's and a it's a hairless rat. Yeah, he'll look at the like hairless rat and just kind of, I guess, pat it once because he's not sure how petting works. He'll like tap it with his finger on her head. It feels about as disgusting as you would think a a a normally hairy creature would be when you touch it. So the guard it feels fine. <laughs> After that, I think he'll kind of look and go. One. How want be smarter? Have 
Dang. And he's gonna point to like his magic bow that Bardusio gave him, or that I bought from Bardusio. You, you're telling me, friend, that you are looking for a um, you're looking for a bow to make you smarter. You want me to give you a book on how to shoot better, or I'm not understanding maybe exactly what you are saying to me. One thing make me think better like Winnie you want to be able to think better like Winnie you're looking for potion or you're looking for some miracle he kind of stares at the size of your head and just kind of it's chameleon shit <laughs> Uh, what recommend? What do I recommend? Well, first and foremost, I probably start with reading and writing. Do you understand how to read and write? Do you speak? How many languages do you speak? He'll put up like. <laughs> God, like that's not account. <laughs> Uh, he'll start just replying in languages, because he doesn't know how to count, so he'll reply once and... Well, he'll say, Come, men. And then he'll reply in Draconic, um, just saying their names. Giant, Goblin, and Orc. Alright, sorry, I figured I would... I should give him his sidekick after all these... Oh, after all this time. Let's stop at that. Baleta. Okay, so... I will uh, murder anyone and everyone for <laughs> Baleta. <laughs> it's in their polishing coins. Um, he says, Okay, well, I suppose that's a great place for you to start. Uh, let me ask you a, qu a couple of uh, questions and maybe I can help you uh, kind of focus down exactly what you're looking for. Uh, first and foremost, if I were to take uh, these five coins, and he drops five coins in a stack, and I were to remove two of them and put them in my pocket, how many coins would be remaining here? He puts up one finger, because that's what he thinks four is, because he doesn't know math. Huh. Four. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a disconnection between the skull and our hands. So that is all right, though. That is maybe not your fault. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, where did you come from? Like, where are your people from? Uh, can I see the map, Zeter? I can't remember yes, the name. Yes, give me one sec. I got you. Oh, I'm from Kiru, goddamn. Kiru. <laughs> ah, the Kiruians. I don't know much about their people. Um, In let's... forest. Ah, you're a jungle dweller. That actually is a good bit of information that helps me. He opens a small ledger, flips it open a couple pages. Uh, Baleta. Baleta kind of continues to polish while she's looking at him, like, full attention. Baleta, do me a favor. Uh, go get me that sack, the uh, the one with the red band around the base of it. The light one, not the heavy one, because the heavy one, you will hurt yourself. You cannot strain your back too much because you are getting older and uh, we cannot have you get sick on me. Baleta jumps down off the table, kind of hops back into the uh, into the corner over here, and you see she jumps into a pile of, of bags and, and sacks and shit. And he, pulls, he starts to scroll his finger down in a ledger. I'm going to look up something really quick, because... Okay, so Baletta comes kind of hopping back over, dragging this very, very small sack behind her, and she kind of climbs up his uh, pant legs and sets it in his lap. Thank you, dear. And he put he picks her up and puts her back into the uh, coin pile, to which she just, like, nothing ever happened. She just goes back to polishing. 
he uh, opens the bag and he reaches inside a little tiny bag about this big but his arm goes all the way down to his shoulder and he reaches around and he says where the hell did i put those potions i know i had at least a few of them around here oh there we go ah and he pulls out a small wooden box and sets it on the table all right well I don't, uh, according to my ledger, I have no permanent uh, things to help with uh, your issue. Uh, but uh, I do have these um, potions that uh, could temporarily assist you. Um, let me look at the price. One moment. Okay, so these potions, uh, so these are, uh, these are from an alchemist that I met a very long time ago. Um, very long time ago. He named them, rightfully so, the Fool's Errand Elixir. Uh, essentially, if you uh, to, were to drink this potion, it will make you, uh, it will increase your capability of uh, intellect for not a very long time, but enough for you maybe to help you understand something you are not in the process of understanding. If you are looking to become more permanently intelligent, if that's what I'm understanding, my suggestion would be start reading books, start studying, maybe find somebody to help teach you things about the world, things and stuff. Great place to start when you're trying to just become a little bit smarter than the average lizard folk. God tech nods intensely. Um, so I can sell you, I have eight of these potions, and he picks the box up and kind of shakes it. I have eight of these potions right now. Each one of them will last. It, it, there is no finite amount of time that they, they will last. These were experimental potions. Apparently the alchemist had a brother who was a complete bumbling fool. Idiot, uh, simpleton, something of the sort. Uh, so that this was purely experimental. However, they say that once he drank them, he was able to then outsmart the alchemist himself, which uh, led to his unfortunate financial demise as he uh, got caught up in some sort of pyramid scheme, something about diet pills, I'm not sure. Anyways, um, I can sell each one of these to you for 1,000 gold pieces. I know that sounds crazy expensive, but let me tell you, once you once your mind opens to the greater world from within your fog-clouded uh, capabilities currently, you'll see why they are as expensive as they are. So, Gartok um, uh, just kind of, like, will search for something, and he, he's gonna go, uh, get, I mean, he's gonna point to the door and get win me and because he has nothing i have zero gold <laughs> oh yes great you can fetch winnie i will not be getting winnie but if you need to get winnie these potions will go nowhere i promise you yeah he'll go get winnie because that's what he was implying he's gonna get me okay okay he doesn't expect Madrusia to move at all <laughs> So Gartok uh, kind of runs out of the uh, out of the building and into the main room. When he is on the bed, Ulrich is there, uh, kind of like you know doing the equivalent of praying the rosary and patching himself up as best as he can. Uh, and in comes Gartok. When I need help. Buy something, Bardusia. You need, you need money. Well, not. <laughs> Did you find something to help Alric? He'll shake his head. <laughs> oh. She's just gonna reach into the bag of holding and grab like. She's gonna reach in the bag of holding, start grabbing money, realize she can't ask him how much, and look at Ulrich and say, I'll I'll be right back. Ulrich will just lazily give like the thumbs up and then just roll back over. Alright, um, yeah, so <laughs> when you'll go with Gartok then, so that she, oops, so that we can purchase uh 
Okay, so you guys go back into the uh, into Bradicio's sanctum, uh, where he and Baleta are sitting. Uh, I believe Gartak wants to purchase or already purchased. Set up a purchase, I should say. Oh, hello, Winnie. Hi. Yes, uh, your friend here came to me telling me that he is sick and tired of being an idiot, so he wanted uh, something to uh, make him not so. I suggested he started with maybe reading and writing, but unfortunately he's still a little bit uh, far out from that. So, in order to nudge him in the right direction, unfortunately I have not no permanent capability of making that happen, as I'm not a freaking miracle worker, but I am a great salesman and I happen to have this box full of potions called the Fool's Errand Elixir. Uh, I have eight of them. They will only last for a little while each, but uh, apparently he is in need of not being a fool anymore. So, uh... And then he kind of, like, whispers to Winnie, um... Uh, he's gonna say it in common. He's just not smart enough. Uh, himself, he says, I think he's becoming self -aware. Uh, so Winnie will try not to, like, chuckle at that last comment. She'll look over at Gartok and she'll say, Um, I'm happy to get these for you, but just so you know, you're very valuable to us, as you are as well. Um, Rodicio, I don't recall last time we were shopping here with you. Did you have any healing potions left, or did we clean you out? Oh, you cleaned me out, like, uh, two weeks ago, and I I've unfortunately so. lost so many of my contacts in the war that uh, I am I am kind of screwed right now. I have calls out to a few people, but the last remaining people that I have contact with, well, it, regular contact with, are in Slag Motion Beak, and uh, because of the World Breaker essentially being on their doorstep... Uh, hopefully not in their backyard yet, that would be terrible. Uh, they are preparing max mass exodus and are currently hoarding all healing uh, necessities uh, awaiting the onslaught. So, I, I don't have very much. I mean, I, I, have, I have some of those potions uh, that you didn't buy. You were looking for a restoration potions, remember? But you only bought a few of what I had. Uh, but as far as actual healing potions, I'm screwed. I have some... I have still some diamonds if you need and things of the sort for for spell casting but uh, no actually elixirs do you have diamond dust yes we talked okay. about this a couple of weeks ago you guys yeah. only wanted to buy just like a little bit of it which is fine you take as much as you need or as little but uh, once it's gone that's it i have no more understood um I, how much diamond dust do you have gold worth i'm assuming is what you're looking for based yes. on weight uh, so I have, uh, I currently have 400 gold worth in, uh, okay. in in one pouch, and that's it. I think we'll we'll happily buy, well, I'll buy three of those in case somebody here needs it for something while we're gone. So we're not taking all of the single resource. Okay. Um, plus the potions for Gartok. Great. So it will be, uh, let's see here, give me one moment. I want to make sure you're getting your discount. I appreciate that. Okay, so instead of 8,400, we're only looking at 72, and that's with your discount. Got it. Um, also, I have at least one item. I believe it was just one item that we would need to have identified. Um, do you mind if I go grab it and just pay you now? That is fine by me. Uh, give me one moment, though. Ah, yes, identification. All right. Um, that, uh, let's see here. That will cost, uh, let's see, identify, beautiful. Yeah, we'll call it 40 gold pieces. Just make sure you're marking that off. Mark off the scroll of teleportation if you haven't also. Already gone. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, yes, go get your item, uh, Gartok, and he picks up the, uh, the little, the little wooden case and he hands it to him. Now remember, you only have eight. Each one of them can work for a minimum of about an hour, upwards to a maximum of a half of a day. So use them wisely. Winnie would run, 
Sorry, after that, when you would, when you would run off, grab the thing and come back. Okay, so when he leaves and comes back. Gartok nods um, and says, Thank you. And well, he'll thank Winnie too when she gets back. So you're bringing in the uh, cloak? Yeah. Okay, so the cloak comes back in just as a reminder of what it looks like. Sorry, I know I'm popping all sorts of so shit up cool. on, your guys on your screen. I know that was a fun one to make. Um, okay, so uh, he uh, he mutters an incantation over it. You didn't bring the elixirs, did you? I, or the, I the, think... the vials? You just brought No, those? I just okay. grabbed the... I'm just making yeah. sure. Just making because sure. we already identified the elixirs. As as you did not. Nobody did. Oh. Well, you, I looked. Everybody we, we made said, an assumption. Yeah, you guys were just like, oh, this must be what it is. Okay, well, we won't go any further then. Uh, okay, so this... They won't let me play with them. Uh, okay, so this, he looks at it. Uh, says, ah... I've seen the I've seen the sigils on the front before. The trim is very nice, and the color is not what I've seen uh, in the mass production market. But I believe. Let me just do a very quick. Uh, let me mutter a very quick incantation here. So he finishes the uh, the incantation that he reads uh, off of like a little pull down scroll. It's like one of those scrolls that like rolls itself up. It, it flashes on the outside, kind of like a magic item, and not so much a one shot. As the energy goes into it, he says, "That, that is exactly what I thought it was. This is uh, it's a cloak of protection. Uh, essentially, the person who wears it, uh, they will focus on its magical energies, especially on the sigil in the center here. And he points to the little triangle in the center with the big circle. Make sure they focus on that sigil, and once it attunes to that person's spirit or soul, it will uh, give them a very little bit of magical protection, as well as uh, strengthening uh, all sorts of different aspects of your existence, including um, how quick you are, how strong you are. It will uh, protect you from things that impact the mind. Um, it is a very, uh, a very simple magic item, but uh, invaluable in the right hands. Okay, thank you. Um, so I don't want to be cheesy about it, but since Ulrich, I remember Ulrich specifically saying that um, the blue rat was an arcane disease. Um, I probably would say, you know, one more thing. I, I have something else that, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to have you look at. Yes, of course. Okay. So I'll go run and grab just one of the vials. I'm not going to call it. Okay, so... Um, as you uh, as you enter the uh, the main sanctum, uh, Blood Main, I see that you're kind of hanging out in there. Um, Winnie would come in. Uh, Winnie gets to uh, the vials, grabs one up. As she turns around, Winnie, it gets hot, and it gets hot fast. And you double over as you realize, oh shit! And as you guys notice, she kind of doubles over the chair. She stands kind of upright, looks around, and Winnie, you get this wave of nausea that kind of rockets through your body, um, and you guys see the boils. <laughs> Big patches of her fur falling off. She looks kind of mangy as everything becomes kind of tattered and sudden. When you look down and your even your fingernails are starting to just kind of like curl inwards and blacken. Um, you realize that you have also been affected. Uh, you are suffering a negative two con and a negative four charisma. Uh, the potion, sorry, uh, you can, you, I didn't see that. I very, I rarely have the chat thing pulled up. It is called the Fool's Errand Elixir. I'm guessing that's a custom item then. Yeah, just add it as a custom item. The weight for the entire box plus the eight potions will be one pound. Um, and you don't know what they do, so just add it as the Fool's Errand's Elixir. You can tag it as a potion if you want to, and then when you drink it, I will tell you what it does. Just make sure that you add eight charges inside of it. Okay, so what are you doing? Um, so I'll present the, um, so, um, Winnie's on a mission right now, so she's going to try to stand up and, um, she's going to look over at Emig, 
Uh, I think it's my turn. Can you take this to Rodicio? And then she's going to hand the bag of holding over as well. Um, take this for Dishio and have him identify what this what's in here if he can. She's gonna hand over one of the vials. I'm gonna she points at the bed. And just sort of slowly makes her way over there. Alright, I'll take the vial and uh the bag, I suppose. Is it the bag of holding or is it the yeah. bag of like money? She would whatever? she'd hand over both. So you get the coin purse of the pocket plane and the bag of holding. And she'll say, I had him look at the cloak already. It's a cloak of protection. It actually might be good for for Ulrich. She's going to lay Definitely down. Definitely for Ulrich. You lay down, I'll head over and uh, talk to Perdicio. Okay. So, uh, Bloodmain is, uh, he heads back over. Um, Gartok, are you doing anything uh, after she leaves, or are you just hanging out? Uh, I think uh, after Bardusio's advice... Um, on learning and studying. Um, Gartok, being Gartok, would go, well, if I'm smarter via the potion which Bordusio says, um, then studying and learning should be easier. <laughs> so I, I think he will, like, being like a child and wanting to use this new thing, he'll drink uh, one potion and then he'll think, who's the person that knows the most about the world and stuff like that? And we go, ah, Sybil, I'm trying to find Sybil. <laughs> Okay, give me one second. I will let you two roleplay the shit out of that in just a moment. So you, um, so you take one of the uh, elixirs out, and you, um, you pop the cork on it, and you drink it. It tastes like absolute fucking garbage. But something interesting happens. As the elixir uh, begins to coat the inside of your mouth, your tongue, and even you are just like, oh, I've eaten like, you know, monkey ass before and this is just awful. Suddenly, you start to pick up notes of nutmeg, cinnamon, sugarcane, some sort of, of cream, maybe that um, cooked down from goat's milk? My goodness, what in the world is this? And suddenly you look up and your entire world shifts. It is as if a veil and a fog has been removed from your existence. Um, your intelligence becomes 18 suddenly. Give me a second, I'm gonna take a note here on something. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> on something not suspicious at all. So, um... You suddenly understand all of the complex flavors that were in that initially horrific tasting elixir. And as that happens, even the scents around you, whereas they were instinctual and all you used to think was friend or foe, um, now you're going, my god, I can smell the spores on the mushrooms that are sending messages in between each other. I can smell the flowers that are in bloom. You catch whiff of apples and strawberries and different and different vegetation from around you that are all sending these complex messages. It's almost too much for you to handle initially. But you take a breath, a focused breath, and an intentional breath. Probably the first intentional breath you've ever taken in your existence. And as you breathe out, you calm yourself as you are looking at the world through the eyes of somebody who is not rolling negatives for everything to do with intelligence. We'll come back to you. Uh, Bloodmane. Um, you, uh, you enter, uh, you walk up towards Brodicio and he, oh my goodness, I, it, there's lots of visitors today. Everybody just keeps coming and going, coming and going. What can I do for you, my friend, Bloodmane? Um, were your services paid for? 
Uh, yes, I believe they were, although, uh, Winfina said she was going to get one more thing, so there may be just a little bit more, but, uh, your friend, uh, Gartak, uh, he got his, his intelligence, uh, he's looking to become smarter, so I gave him a little something-something to, you know, make his brain size increase, but not swell so much that it kills him, hopefully. Uh, what can I do for you, though? Uh, you got, uh, something for me that you need as well? So, Berdicio, be very careful with this. I don't know what this is. I don't think any of us do, but it could be dangerous. I'm going to carefully take the vial out and offer it to him. Okay. He, uh, he reaches up. My goodness, what in the hell? Kind of looks at it close. He very nonchalantly flips it in the air and catches it by the cork and then looks at it upside down. That is... What the hell is this? Give, give, give me, give me one moment. Sets it down on the table next. He sets it down on the table next to Boletta, and Boletta kind of eyes it. Boletta. He looks. No. Boletta looks up, and then she looks back down and continues to polish the coin that she's got. Good kinda Boletta. <laughs> glances at it again, and then looks. Just keeps going back to the coin. Um, so he pulls out a small wand, he flicks a little switch on it, and then, uh, you see this dull light kind of hover over it. And as he looks at it, you too see it glows, kind of as if it were glowing under a black light. It's kind of got this purple and blue glow to it, and he goes, Ooh, that is very, very naughty magic. That, uh, this is an indicator of this being something necromantic. You want me to, uh, put an identify into it and see if we can figure out what it is? It's a potion or something? Could be a potion. I th could be a disease. But yes, if you'd like to identify it, I can pay you for that. Yeah, yes, yeah, that is fine. Uh, go ahead and provide me with the 40 gold coins. That is with the discount, of course. And uh, let me one second here. Pulls out the little scroll. Looks at the, all the little tags on it. Grabs one, pulls it down again. He uh, reads from it and the uh, front of it kind of glows. The front of the case glows. And as he touches the vial again, you see his eyes, as he looks up, both of his eyes are wide and they both become milky, um, kind of blue and black swirls. And he blinks a few times before his eyes go back to normal and he goes, My goodness, that is... I saw its creation. That is very, very... Interesting. That is not something that happens very often with the identification magic within my scroll keys. This is, um, this is technically magical, but kind of not at the same time. It is necromantic in nature. Somebody with a background in necromancy and alchemy put this together in some crazy amalgamation of no thank you. And I hope there's not a lot of it, but this is, uh, this is actually a refined disease that has been put into the form of a poison which can be utilized via injury to harm whoever is injured by it. Uh, essentially what will happen is... Um, what will happen is that once this, uh, once this poison is in the bloodstream of somebody, if they are not successful in resisting it themselves, they will immediately be affected uh, by the damage of internal organs. Uh, the poison will rack the interior of the body, which is great for the person doing the stabbing, not so great for the person taking the stabbing. Uh, after that... There, it, it appears that some sort of pustules will appear on the person's body and it will greatly affect their resolve and their capability of conversing with other people. That will last for an entire day. Period. Full stop. Um, while that happens, two interesting things will also happen with it. First and foremost, it will warp the person's uh, anatomy as far as their breathing is concerned, and it will grant them the ability to breathe underwater without the need for air for that 24 hours. However, it will also do something else. It will cause the flesh of the person to become slightly necrotic in nature, which will make them extremely vulnerable to damage that is called down from the gods in the form of radiance. 
could be very useful. It does not appear to me that this is something contagious like a disease. This has been refined into a poison. So, if I am understanding this correctly, it will go away after a day of rest? This form of poison, yes. But in my vision, I saw that this poison was created through alchemical means and under the hands of a disease that was created by necromantic magic. This is a whole different ballpark. I don't suppose if you saw its creation you might know some way of countering its effects? Well, uh, you could drink, uh, I have potions of poison resistance that uh, if you are affected by well, any poison, you have a better chance of not taking effect to it. Uh, I suppose things like restoration could probably fix it as well, since you'll technically be poisoned during that time frame that it is affecting you. As far as the disease component, I have no idea about that, but uh, this is a poison, this is not technically a disease. Would a potion of poison resistance work once you've already been poisoned? That's a great question. Give me a moment. And he uh, he grabs a book off of uh, one of the stacks, kind of moves a few, grabs it, flips it open. I haven't actually sold the po potion of poison resistance in a very long time. Uh, let me see here. So it, yeah. So yes, uh, this is kind of multifaceted. So the the, the damage that will be racking the um, that will be racking the interiors of the individual, um, you you will have some resistance to that uh, even after the fact after you've been poisoned, um, which is great. Uh, however, uh, it does not it doesn't necessarily make you immune to becoming or or resist becoming poisoned. It just reduces the damage to your internal organs um, that a poison would cause. I see. Would perhaps this and then resting uh, take care of it? I understand that it acts like a poison. And you did mention that it would take about a day. Would this lessen the effects, perhaps, and then after the course of a day, they might feel better? Uh, again, as far as this poison and this vial is concerned, uh, after a day, yes, it, it, it appears to me. Now, if somebody is very weak of resolve, there's a possibility, I'm sure, that it continues or kills them outright. Uh, but as far as I can tell, um, as long as they get rest and are, are not up and doing crazy things, uh, they could probably recover from it. As far as the, what is in this vial. I understand. Uh, Emic has the uh, wherewithal to probably check in the bag of holding to see if we even have uh, any potions of poison resistance. Candace? Hold on a second. Or potentially spending on stuff we've got. We have... Okay. Sorry, I was trying to do it with their filter, but it's not working. So it's... I do not see any potions of poison resistance in the bag of Pretty show, my friend. How much are 
potions of poison resistance. Ah, well, with your discount, I can sell them to you for 255 gold pieces each. And how many do you happen to have? Ah, that's a good question. Let me take a look in the bag. I actually have six. Uh, may I have three, please? Very well, 765 gold pieces. He reaches into the uh, the bag, pulls the six out on like a little. It almost looks like a like one of those like uh, rotating toothbrush holders where you spin it and then the toothbrush is just in its own slot. Uh, but he sets it down. There's six vials. He pulls three out and he hands them to you. And Candace has removed the 765, so you're good. Yeah, I think so far the tally is 805 gold pieces, Candace. Oh yeah, from the the 40 with the other. Yeah, with the, with the 40, yeah. I'm keeping a running tally so you don't have to dick with it until we're done. <laughs> All right, I will hand over the gold and uh, put the uh, potions of poison resistance into the bag of holding. Okay. Th thank you for your insight. Uh, hopefully I can help those afflicted because it looks awful. Yes, it is not a, not a great thing to be uh, impacted by. Now, like I mentioned a few times, remember that this is a refined poison based off of a disease, so there are differences between the two. Yes, and I'm not sure if they were struck with a weapon coated in this poison, or if they got it some other way. I was hmm, doing my thing at the time. Well, that's okay. Better safe than sorry, I always say. I am going to go tend to my friends. Thank you. You're welcome. And he turns and starts uh, putting coins in front of Valletta. All right. All right. So, uh, so Bloodmain, as you enter, um, why don't we go ahead, since we're at this point right now, this is actually a really good point for us to go ahead and take our break since we're at like uh, noon on the dot. So why don't we go ahead and say let's come back in 10 or 15 minutes, depending on how long you need, and we will dive back into it. Yeah, I got a walk rocket. He hasn't been feeling good, so I might take a couple extra minutes, but I'm laying there dying anyway, so we should be fine. Namesies. Dying. You're so dramatic. <laughs> Duh. All right. Yep, that's no problem, though, if you got to do what you got to do with rocket. All right, guys. Um, we'll be back in just a few then. All right, for those of you who are no, hanging out and over... Yes. Broccoli and cheddar, cheddar always, always makes, makes it better. It better. Oh, my God, so it's good. so good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us. I'm going to go ahead and step away so I can help Candace get the uh, kiddos down for a nap. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Hello to anyone wanting some morning practice on the bagpipes? On the bagpipes, my goodness. Uh, but uh, yeah, welcome on in uh, Rose, Torin, Spooky, Pain. I see all sorts of people. Who do we got actually hanging out in chat? Oh, Orion is not happy that he has to take a nap. Rose, hello. Bay, hello. Sneaky Tinky, hello. All right, so that you guys don't have to listen to the uh, child screaming in the background. He's throwing a fit because he doesn't want to take a nap. But it's nap time, so. All right, guys, I'll be back in 10, 15 minutes, and we'll, uh, we'll dive right back into this RP and see where it takes us. Thank you so much.
All right, guys. I'm back. The rest of the crew uh, can obviously take their time. There's no no rush on my end. I just wanted to pop back in since I got my snacks. Kiddos are getting themselves situated for a, uh, a short nap time. And, uh, yeah, that's that. How's everybody doing? How are we doing? Don't mind me while I snack on my snackies. Doing good, good, doing good. Fucking around in <laughs> Tiny Tino's. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. No, I've actually never played it. Ooh, Secret of Mana. Hell yeah, wow. And that takes me back, holy shit. Gonna be honest, Xavier. I did not expect to bump straight up to 18 Gs. So most of the potions that increase some sort of stat, it goes 18 is the minimum it increases it to. Awesome. I, I guess for future reference, the way intelligence works is it just you know this stuff, or is it just it helps you learn? Because the way I figured it is wisdom is you know stuff. Intelligence is just you, you're better at learning the stuff you need to know. So wisdom is based on experience. So wisdom are things you know based on what has happened to you already. Intelligence, raw intelligence, is your ability to comprehend complex things that are being taught to you. Okay, so maybe that potion wasn't a waste. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Nice, you ordered a 20 As I was sitting here, I was going to be like, ah, oh, I probably shouldn't have drank that potion. God talk knows this now, I'm going to make a joke about it when we come back. He does know it, and he knows many of things. He it, and it's in its comprehension, right? So uh, a big part of intelligence for somebody like Gartok is not because Gartok has survived a very long time based on wisdom. It was oh, I don't eat the thing that gives me bloody diarrhea. Instead, I eat the thing that makes my poop solid and and normal. You know, I don't eat that poison mushroom or that mushroom with that color pattern on it because. I hallucinated for 15 hours, you know, um, shit like that, right? The crocodile bit my leg and took a chunk of it out. Okay, don't fuck with the crocodiles or don't do it in this manner. So that's the survival wisdom that he has. However, what I feel Gartok lacks a lot of based on the way you roleplay him is comprehension of the things around him. He's not, he's not a bumbling, truly a bumbling fool. He just doesn't get it. Um, because things just don't make sense. They don't come to him easy. Now, it's like, that's why, you know, the taste. Of course it tastes horrific to you, but then once you realize all the subtle undertones of things that you've had before, and you're like, oh, oh, that's what that is, that's what that is. The taste literally changes to your palate because now you get it. I love that. It's gonna be fun. I might actually need to give him a different voice, I don't know. <laughs> Gartok's voice is not meant for intelligence. I'm gonna be like Ree. Yes, good sir. <laughs> no, that was Ree's native tongue. Um, even when Ulrich spoke to him in Lizard Man, it was still basic. But it might be, I might just copy that and steal it from Kevin G. <laughs> Pain, what kind of game are you guys hunting? Rabbit, I'm assuming. Rabbit, squirrel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um,
Oh, wow. All sorts of goofy stuff. What the hell are you hunting skunk for? What are you guys doing with a skunk? Tell me you don't just kill to kill. And are you guys eating the possum and groundhog? Like, what the hell are you doing with them? I mean, look, if you're eating skunk, that's fine by me, too. To each their own. Definitely prefer chicken over skunk. <laughs> I actually, I know people who eat possum, too, so I wouldn't, uh... I wouldn't doubt that. Rabbit and squirrel, on the other hand, good shit. That's, it shot my nature up to nine. That's crazy. Because now you get it. Great wishes he had this intelligence. Cool, good shit. Good shit. Pest control and population control. <clears throat> That's funny. Yeah, skunks fucking suck, man. They'll dig huge holes in your yards to eat the grubs. Big assholes. At least they did in the Midwest. I'm not sure if they do that up in the Northeast, uh, but I know our, our we literally would catch them out there at night, and you'd come out in the morning, and every couple feet, it looked like you got hit by a fucking mortar strike. All right, friends. I'm going to hop back over to our lovely group. And we'll see you at the tail end. Yeah, those and groundhogs are terrible. See, yeah, I'm not familiar. I don't have a whole lot of experience with groundhogs, but I definitely know skunks fucking suck. Rabbits, too, actually. Rabbits will dig your fucking yard up like crazy, especially during breeding season. Fuck them. And then you're out there with the damn lawnmower, and every time... So take a skunk in times two. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, put him down. Put him down! Alright, guys. All right, friends, we are back. Um, get just something set up on my end here. Whoops, there we go. All right, so as um, Bloodmane is making his way back in to the uh, central uh, area, Gartok will kind of go down to you after you drink the potion and essentially become sentient. Um, uh, what what do you do? I, I think Gartok would still go looking for Sybil because it's like he kind of gets this insight into himself. Um, definitely not from a conversation about four seconds ago, <laughs> uh, and. Just because he wants to learn more about things he just didn't know. Okay. So, Sybil, where were you at at this point? So, Sybil waited outside for a little bit. She kind of watched all of the back and forth. And she had this, like, yep, this is not an area I'm going to be able to go and help with. I'm not going to go far so I don't get lost in the magically enchanted Fey Grove. I'm just going to, oh, look, a place where I can stab things. Uh, so she would have gone into the little area. She didn't really tell anyone, but that's mostly because people were busy and she didn't want to be like, hey guys. Uh, so she would have gone in here and she is kind of putting herself through the paces again. It's her, I need to process what the fuck, um, through movement. So she's making full use of the space in here at the moment. <clears throat> she's moving, she's flipping, she's dabbing, she's slashing. Um, and she is just working her way through the the bullshit that is uh, the world ending. Okay. So, Gartok, why don't you go ahead and make an investigation check for me? He just gets it. Um, so, Gartok, you, as you are kind of looking around, trying to figure out where the hell Sybil went, because you were in Brodicio's chambers when she decided to leave you kind of stop you look down on the ground uh you kind of follow like the, the 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 traces of tracks though the grove kind of churns the earth regularly and those disappear quickly but as you begin to walk around um you hear coming from the interior of this uh of this building um the sound of somebody 
um, doing a lot of physical work and based on what you know and now comprehend as far as Sybil is concerned, you're confident that she's probably in there doing some sort of exercising. It sounds like somebody's doing a lot of moving around in calisthenics. Um, maybe she's doing an aerobic class, you know, like an old mid-90s aerobic class. And up and down and up and down and left and right. Oh, R.I.P. Richard Simmons, by the way. Um, oh, man. Yeah, that's sad, man. It's a bad week. Uh, okay, so that's that's what you pick up. Uh, all right. In that case, um, Gartek would kind of just approach that way. And um, he knows he's under time constraints because that's what Berducio said because he doesn't know how long it's going to last. Um, so... But at the same time, he's going to just watch Sybil for a bit, because he knows his expertise is the bow. That's where he shines. Sybil's is with those daggers. He's seen her do some crazy shit with them. Um, this is part performance, part practice. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of movement. It's a lot of very quick darting, um, darting movement, making sure she's not in one place for any more than a fraction of a second if she can avoid it. Yeah, and uh, and Gartok, you get that as you as you lay eyes on her for the first time with mental clarity, you get that about half of the movements she's making are one hundred percent unnecessary for effective combat. It's a show, but also she's a performer, so like, eh. Uh, in that case, Gartok just kind of. Sorry to interrupt. Shit, what? Oh. And she, like, she'll, <laughs> she'll stop moving. Her <sighs> talk, you. Yep. Hi. Is everything okay? Oh, no. Are they okay? Do you need me? Yes. Uh. That yes, you need was... me, or yes, they're okay. I think they're okay. Auric is being taken care of. Uh, so we'll <laughs> go ahead and make an insight check. God, that's not subtle. That's not his time. Is that a flat insight check? Yeah, just make an insight check. It's gonna go like crap. Oh no. So this 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 had nothing to do with what he said. It's the fact that how he is speaking right now, what he is saying, something is not fucking right with this guy. He, and, and he like, just said the most complete two sentences to you that he ever has, period. Yeah, and I think that as he's speaking, um, he's like stopping for seconds, not as long as before, where he had to like actually think of what words to use. This is just... Oh, I understand this word, and it would fit in this position. But it's taking him longer, because he's kind of learning the words as he's going. Or so, re-comprehending them. Sybil pauses for a moment, and where she had been going to, like, sheath her daggers, she just kind of stops, and now she's just kind of, like, just, they're in her hands, just loosely. Her stance shifts a little bit. It's a little looser, ready to move. It's like, right. Well, how can I help? She's being suspicious as fuck of this, cause, uh, doppelganger? I don't have much time, I think. Oh, is that so? What don't you have much time for? Learning. <laughs> uh huh. Arducio, uh, Winnie bought me a potion. I asked her. I get things now. It's strange. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you 
talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she just lot. kind of just nods like, well, yeah. <laughs> of stories and overthinking. I want to learn more. I want to be smart. You want to learn more stories, things in general, or how to overthink? Yes. <laughs> okay. Still, still not trusting this in any way, shape, or form. Um, how long do you have? Reducio said between an hour and half a day. <laughs> How long has it... How many potions did you buy, Gartok? I can't count. This many. And he's gonna hold up the box. <laughs> there are, uh, seven vials inside. Okay, step forward and take a look at him and see if I can figure out what the fuck and if this actually makes sense. He's okay. called it Fool's Errand. Do I have any idea what that is? Is there a conveniently labeled uh, insert in the box? Anything Absolutely like that? not. No, this was a one-off a one-off elixir that was made by somebody uh, who you've probably never heard of before, uh, as he is very not famous. Um, so yeah, you look at it. You can make a nature check if you'd like to discern maybe like what might be in here. I mean, worth a shot. She's going, what the fuck? None of this adds up. <laughs> yeah, nope. Yeah, you're not entirely sure. Um, you know, you, you pop the cork on one, you give it a smell. It smells acrid as shit, um, kind of foul in nature. Um, you, I mean, you've heard of potions that can make people really fucking strong or can fortify their mental resolve, um, make them even more dexterous, but you've never heard of one that affects intellect or in or or the ability to learn but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and he something is not right about him and there is a potion vial missing so the pieces add up though you're not entirely sure what the hell this thing is yeah. all right did you did you tell the others when he knows i have them and where is Winnie right now, Gartok? Probably with Ulrich. That's where I found her. Well, why don't we go find the others and we can talk as we go in that direction? As she realizes that he is currently blocking the only exit, and if he is in fact here to murder her, this would be a bad strategic uh, place to be. <laughs> Okay. And he'll, like, move out of the way. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely keeping those daggers very readily accessible. This is weird as fuck. I mean, Gartak is a survivalist, I guess. So can I, um... And he's used to, I guess, scouting animals and stuff for hunting. Is it possible to, like, inside check Sybil? Because <laughs> she seems really, you know, a little bit strange. Um... That and apparently Winnie, he remembers Winnie complaining about her murdering a monkey for some reason. Yeah, go ahead. You can make an insight check. I'll, we'll, we'll see what you roll. So, again, just like you, like you understood that, you know, most of what she was doing in there was per, for performance. They were unnecessary movements and flourishes for effective combat. Um, you are you are conscious of the fact that she is acting uneasy right now you get it um but you also get that you are thinking much differently and because you get that you also get that 
it might make somebody feel uncomfortable or out of place because they're used to you not being like this, so. You kind of trace it back. You kind of like, you know, start in this circle and you're like, okay, I knew she was doing something funky. I talked to her. She realized I was doing something funky. She started acting strange, but that makes sense because then I was the one acting funky to begin with. So it just does this, and it's a vicious cycle, but you get it. I'd like to think that instead of your finger going in a circle, it's Garchalk's eyes, which like one, the right eye goes in like a do, and then it moves to the left as it reaches the edge and then goes around. <laughs> I just had a mental image of the pupil being the DVD. I'm just bouncing exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> Glad you got it. <laughs> oh. It's okay. I'm strange to you, I guess. Not going to what the hell was that? hurt. Why did she slam yeah. that door? You understand why I, of all people, would be, in, have an increased suspicion towards a complete behavioral shift, yes? I have to, like, think of this the way Garchalk would, because back then he just thought, huh, Sybil disappeared and now she's over there. <laughs> um, not completely. Okay, when... so she's going to watch him real closely as she asks this. Are you aware of what a doppelganger is? Make a history check, Gartok. Um, mm, no. You're, you're, you've heard the word used, but you don't know what the fuck they are. <clears throat> no, I've heard you talk about that, but don't know. All right. Well, the short version is that it is a being that typically takes the place of a known companion of a group that they want to target. Um subsumes most of their memories and does their best to take the role of that being until which time they can do whatever it is they're there to do. But I was with the group the whole time. I have no idea where you were. I was in here. And no one else is around you, Gartok. So, I'm gonna walk in that direction, to where I'm assuming the others still are. And she just <laughs> starts moving without completely letting him out of her sight. Gartok go follow. <laughs> okay. It's a weird little, like, side, side step of, like, you're still there, right? And Garthog oh, is great. just looking around at everything in, like, new amazement. <laughs> Alright. so bad when she finds out that everyone's sick. So as you two are approaching uh, Bloodmane, you have entered, we'll pause with you guys uh, just outside, um, but Bloodmane, you've entered um, with the potions, so how would you like to uh, go about that? Uh, Winnie and Ulrich, you would both see at this point uh, Bloodmane enter. Yeah. I would like to tell you both what I learned, and we can decide on what to do from there. So the, the vial, uh, vials, I guess, are filled with poison, but the poison is based off of a disease. We don't really know if you were poisoned by the stuff that's in the vial, or if maybe you were bitten or scratched or got this disease or got the disease form uh, of what's in the vial. If it's what's in the vial, uh, you guys should feel better after about a day. <clears throat> I got a few potions of 
poison resistance that might help the internal pain, um, but I'm not entirely sure how well it will work. Okay. When you, like, kind of prop herself up on her elbows to... So, I thought that was, um... I thought it was an arcane, um... An arcane issue. Is it not an arcane issue? Uh, Berdicio mentioned that I believe he said restoration helps uh, with with these things, but again, it depends on what you've been afflicted with, and I don't know enough about any of that to give you any more help than I have. Okay. She'll kind of look over at Ulrich. I mean, what, what it sounds like it does uh poison that's derived from this so they created this disease and then they manufactured a poison off of this that's how it sounded to me well um I know from what I've know of the disease that I've for the little bit I've know about it that we are exhibiting signs of the disease so okay yeah, why don't we, uh, what, um, I can try first. That way if something is horribly wrong, Ulrich's still here to fix it. Are, uh, you want to try one of the, uh, poison resistance vials? Yeah, if we want to see if it'll work. If it does, that would be great to know, but if not, then it's not two of them being used. I'll hand one to you. So at this point, you guys notice uh, Falcona from just behind uh, the headboard of where Winnie and um, Ulrich are. Uh, Falcona materializes through the wall, uh, her feet still connected to the ground, and she kind of bows at uh, Bloodmane, looks down at Ulrich, and then at Winnie. Her eyes go wide, and she says, Octruid? Octruid? We can't hear you. Yes. There we go. Okay. What happened to you? Oh, it seemed that I was afflicted with it as well, and it is. It takes time for it to take um, place in your system, but we may have a solution. Should we be worried, Octruid? Mm, from what I understand, no. You have to be poised. You have to be attacked with it. And she'll kind of look over at Emic to get a little help with describing how the hell you get this illness. It seems like a disease. Uh, or a poison, I guess. We got it by fighting some unclean things in the ocean. Very well. I've attempted to scour for resources, but unfortunately, everything has been drained completely, still being pumped back into the infection and disease that's spreading amongst those who were injured and returned to the grove. The healing is underway, but it will probably still be a few days, if not a few weeks, before we have any additional resources to spare. Understandable. Um, we can try this and see if it works, and if it doesn't, rest is supposed to help. I don't, from what I understand, we shouldn't be contagious to anybody that we aren't directly attacking, but we'll still avoid contact as best as possible. Understood. I will put a call out for the local fauna to stay clear of the heart of the grove until we've made sure this is not contagious in some sort of way. If this were to spread to the populations of the military structure, it would decimate them. Yes, uh, understood. And on that note, she's going to pop the, assuming the cork, on the, on the potion, and then she's going to drink it to see if it will get rid of this. And it's about that time, uh, pretty much at that moment, as you begin to swig the um, potion vial that Sybil and Gartok enter from the uh, opposing side of the room. 
So Sybil does have daggers in hand. And it looks very on edge. So, Winnie, you drink the potion of poison resistance? Yeah. Okay, so you, for the next hour, you have resistance to poison damage. Okay. Go and talk just waves and smiles with the answers. <laughs> She'll, after she drinks it, Winnie will kind of sit for just a second, see if she feels any different, and then when she doesn't, just... You, I mean, you do feel different. You feel like something is affecting your the the actual like overall fortitude of your of your system. But it, I mean, the boils are still there. Mm-hmm. Well, it didn't undo. And then just remove one of those potions from the uh, bag. Yeah. Well, better than nothing. Okay, um, we definitely need to just avoid contact with others. Um, those of you who are healthy should probably, those of you who are healthy who have already overcome it should probably just kind of stay away. Well, before we stay away, um, when were you afflicted? Winnie, when did it hit you? Uh, I don't know. How much time has passed since... Since you since started I showing the symptoms? 15 minutes? Yeah. It's, it hasn't been long. 15 minutes, maybe. Did you talk to Rodicio at all? I did. Side eyes. Back and then Winnie. I did, and um, I did to get uh, to get oh, some potions for Gartok. And, um, why? Um, because he's acting oddly, and I wanted to make sure it was in fact him. And if. He was a doppelganger. That would... Well... She just doesn't finish the thought. Would you explain what that means? Yeah, hear that? That's not... That's weird. Well, the potions that we bought for him were to help him be smarter. <clears throat> yep. They've they've worked, I think. Um she'll she the daggers. Um I was worried that you were not you, Gartok. I am glad that you do seem to be you. And yes, I will happily explain or share any stories you want to hear. Um. You teach me how to count first. <laughs> blank, blank. Uh, yeah. We can do that. Uh, this Winnie, you want to- four, right? <laughs> and he puts up one finger. <laughs> no. It's the just the hand on the claw. No. <laughs> Winnie, you said you want us to quarantine for a little bit? We'll be in the um, training area down below. Okay. Uh, Emig, do you feel all right? Do I look all right? Yes. Is that a trick question? Thank you, Gartok. <laughs> <laughs> I feel fine at this moment. Do you think it's wise to be... Someone needs to stay with them, but... Also, I worry about the... The risks of if it is contagious in a way we don't understand or expect. I think I've done what I can do for them now. I think rest is the, the best thing. 
So yes, I feel okay to leave as long as there's nothing that Winnie or Ulrich need from me. I think at this point we just need to rest. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. In case you need it, and I'm not around, I'm going to leave these things here. And I'm going to take the bag of holding and the uh, purse of the pocket plane and like just put them over by where Winnie is at. Oh, actually, before you do that, the bag of holding, um, I'm sure going closer will be fine. I'm going to walk over and I'm going to spend several rounds removing my stuff from the bag of holding so I can have it back because I would like to be fully armed. Okay. Yeah. You, all of your stuff is still there. I'm assuming, right? When you didn't, I don't remember any. No, I, okay. Just sure. no I, I didn't. I accidentally sold a couple of things. <laughs> so hear me out. Yannis, you can remove 14 and a half pounds or whatever you would mark as being my, my crap. Okay. It is going to take a minute. I put almost everything that I, almost every worldly possession I had into that bag. Bloodmane walks over to Gartok and looks very interested. Very interested. How are you feeling, Gartok? Strange. What I'm doing is wrong. Thinking feels wrong. Did you get your leeches removed under the water? Yes. Look tasty. <laughs> Good. So, potions. Oh, this is this is interesting. I'd love to talk to you. Yes, can learn from talking. At this point, Emix just gonna kind of duck out uh, to give the sickos some space. So we'll do a check and make sure sh there's nothing she can get for either of them. Um, and if they're good, then yeah, she'll also leave them to die silently. Um, I do have uh, one of those potions, um, Lesser Restoration, if that would help. I think that's what you gave to me that's kind of a blur. Oh, uh... If resting doesn't help, then maybe we'll do that, but since it's a finite resource that we're finding is more finite than it was before, I probably should try to save them. She'll nod. Well, I will... I'll have it if it... if it is needed. I'm... Assuming at any point you can call one of the critters of the grove to you um, if you need us just send one of them to us if you can't come to us and yourselves I don't need to understand them to know that that means go to the druid also if any of them come begging for food I'm probably taking that as a sign that I need to go to you she'll kind of just lean back like collapse back laying down again and just let herself rest. Okay. So, what is everybody's intention at this point? It is only about 2.30 in the afternoon, so you have a long time before you can even take a long rest, so... <clears throat> Survive? My was to hang out with, uh, with Gartok. Okay. So, Gartok, who are you hanging out with, then? Oh, yes, the video game options. Um, well, no, it's not a video game no, option. You said that you were going to go talk to Sybil and Bloodman. You cannot do those two things at the same exact time. I, I, so. I know. Um, I think Gartok went to ask Sybil first, but he's, he's I guess, while waiting for Sybil to finish, he'll pop outside and talk with Bloodman. Okay. Because he doesn't know how long she's going to take. 
Sure, sure. So yeah. um, for the sake of brevity, though, because these are going to just be extended conversations that will happen off screen, um, who are you intending to go and actually spend the time with? Um, most of it will probably be with Sybil, because Gortok went directly to ask for her, and she said she'd teach him numbers. Understood. Okay. Yep. Um, her intention will be to go into the training area down here. Um, yeah, she'll teach numbers, have whatever conversations, etc. She'll teach him how to think now that he's capable of it, sure. We'll try to. Okay. And if right. Bloodmane joins us, then, you know, we can have a three-party chat. I almost said something else, but I'm not... <laughs> yeah, I, I knew where you were going. Look, you just get it, okay? That's what this potion has done for you. Uh, all right, so, uh, the two sickies, I'm assuming, are you two doing anything important here? Are you guys preparing too long rest at this point? Is that what I'm understanding? You are just going through the day and hoping for the best tomorrow, or what's the intention here? So if my my intention would be if things start to seem like they're getting worse for either of us, I'd use my last spell slot to cast less restoration and then we'd go one of us would drink a potion just to kind of stave it off. But if it seems like resting is helping them, we're just going to rest. So it doesn't necessarily seem like resting would be helping as you're going throughout the bulk of the day. Again, it's midday. You guys aren't even at the point where you can long, tr truly long rest to try to see if it if it heals itself. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it progresses during this time leading up towards the night, towards the point where you can actually fall asleep, um, but it definitely doesn't lessen, and the boils keep bursting, um, and growing and swelling, and the pain is getting pretty horrific. Alright, then, uh, I assume Alwork would see that before I do, so, um, I'd use my last spell slot on him for a lesser restoration. Okay. And then I would drink a lesser restoration potion. Okay, so go ahead and mark the spell slot off and the potion. So as both of you are impacted by the um, by the uh, lesser restoration magic, you are each cured of one point of constitution damage. So Ulrich, you're at a minus three right now, and Winnie, you're at a minus one. Um, and, and it does seem, it again, it doesn't seem to progress once it has been cured. Like, you are, like, you have, I, I mean... We don't, don't even need to discuss it anymore. You guys have already figured out what, what fixes this shit. So do with that what you will. Okay. So you two are out for the count as far as the long rest is concerned. And then Gartok, Bloodmane, and Sybil. Are you all talking? Or Bloodmane, are you planning on doing something else? Or is this just kind of over the course of the day you guys are having conversation with the now intelligent Gartok? Bloodmane would have uh, tried to ask for one of those potions, so he himself could use this time to study. Okay. Uh, as soon as Gartok is back, I will let him answer that. I'm going to put him down here since I know he's going to be chilling here with Sybil. I know Lucy could hear us. Uh, yeah, Gartok would be more than willing to give up a potion away. I'll just mark one off. Okay, so blood main. Um, you take it, drink it. Um, as you drink it, your intelligence goes to 18, uh, your score, and you become uh, very aware of everything around you. Um, just e even, even the, like, as soon as it hits you, all of the shit you have not been able to completely comprehend from the book, the, the different sigils and the, the, the fine details within the character structure, um, you're like, oh shit, and you you immediately start to overthink to a point where like you need to sit down and really get the book open and, and take a deep dive into it. So, um, so that's that. Uh, let me take a note here. Okay, so, Sybil and Gartok, you guys converse uh, in great detail. I'm assuming that you, Sybil, just don't stop talking and telling stories. Um, and Gartok, are you just drinking in the information after you guys go through counting? 
Um, yeah, he absolutely will be. He'll be trying to absorb it and, I guess, memorize it and try and understand it. Understood. So why don't you go ahead and make probably an intelligence check just, for me? Probably sometimes stopping Sybil to give himself some time, because uh, he knows Sybil likes to talk really fast. Um, so actually, because this is teaching thing, she's going to be con cognizant of that. She'll share information, but she's also going to make sure that it's actually absorbed. And part of this is the, uh, hang on. He just said one, two, three. Weird. Okay, yep, cool, he's got that. Moving on. Okay. So 16. So over the course of the next about eight hours, we'll say, because um, that's about the time that you guys would have to uh, to do this. Um, and I'm going to come back to Blood Moon just to touch on yours in just a moment here. But over the next eight hours, which brings you to about midnight, you successfully teach Gartok to count to 50 by himself. Um, not only do you teach him to count to 50, but you get him to actually, um, you get him to remember and recite, um, a, a very small handful, like we'll say three, um, tales that are kind of written in a poet, like poetic stanzas. They're just very, very simple, almost like children's stories, children's, you know, rhymes. Um, but you, you do successfully get that into his mind. Um, you realize it's starting to get very, very, very late. And Gartok, you have a moment where you are kind of excitedly repeating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and you, you go, 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 go. You're, you're stopping and getting the, um, getting the rhymes out successfully, and your potion wears off and your intelligence becomes 9. And suddenly, you don't get it. You just, you don't get it. You stop, and you put a finger up, and you go, four. Yes, four. And everything that you've learned is gone in an instant. And you notice the, fa the, the change in his face is excited, 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 excited. He stops, his mouth goes kind of slack jaw, and he looks at you, yeah, his eyes go in two different directions again, and you realize that it was a potion. It was temporary. Okay. Let's let's try this again. Just uh just a five this time. You know what? Just a four. If we can get to four, we'll be happy. And she'll sit down and Four. she's going to try and teach nine intelligence Gartok how to count. And he'll okay. pay attention. Okay. It's much harder to get through that thick skull when there's nothing rattling around inside. Um, but um, Gartok, go ahead and make an intelligence check now. A fucking nat 20. In a strange, maybe magical, maybe alchemical, maybe just luck, maybe sheer luck, maybe dumb luck is what he's got on his side right now. Nine intel it is dumb luck. Gartok successfully counts to nine and uses his right fingers. Now, whether he can do that again is up to him. But he does successfully do it. And he fucking struggles. It takes like six minutes. You know, that's... That's going to be the tale for tomorrow morning. Can we get some food? Please, friend. God, Doc shakes his head like, like very excitedly hours. for food. <laughs> All right, so you two uh, go and eat, find a place to rest your heads, and prepare yourself for the evening. Bloodman, you have taken to the book. Uh, unfortunately, your potion um, it did, it does not last quite as long, but you do get a good um, four hours out of the heightened 
uh, awareness and uh, for you because you're not let me check before I say this ah disregard you are not quite as intelligent as I thought <laughs> Uh, I'm average. A little less than average, but uh, yeah, we can wrap up. Isn't it a nine? No, it's a ten. Oh, is it? That's weird. It says base nine on your character sheet. Yeah, I've got a plus one from ability improvement. Ah, 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 gotcha. Okay. Well, we'll call you a little bit above average, then, I guess. Uh, yeah, so... You um so you take in the the raw intelligence and the understanding and you go into the book. Um, the book kind of opens to you some of the some of the sigils and designs make a little bit more sense to you in the way that they are laid out, and then you get to this page that you have not been able to crack before it was a page that was covered in a thin layer of inky water and no matter how you utilize the sigils in the prior portions of the book it, up until this point you've just not been able to successfully get through and it's really been aggravating because you can see something on the other side of the inkiness because it's not completely black um, but you just haven't cracked that code so as you're looking at the page and and trying the sigils suddenly as you're coming to the tail end of this of this potion and realizing it as they're starting to get a little bit of fogginess something clicks and you get it and you trace the sigil um as the prior pages had suggested the only thing you do is that you turn the book to a uh to a to a slightly different angle angling it to the right and as you look at the sigil that's now kind of humming on top of this inkiness you see that there is essentially a keyhole drawn out in the sigils in the interior sigils and as you plunge your finger into the inkiness your hand disappears into the page and the inky water absorbs up and into your hand and you have now unlocked this page this is a good segue into you guys taking a long rest because everybody has officially leveled and hit our milestone. So uh, taking care, uh, there, are, there are a lot of different things you can do in any order, but you guys have now achieved enough of those pieces for everybody to level. So now that we are taking a long rest, why don't we all go ahead and get our leveling um, done. So everybody go ahead and roll your hit die in, um, in chat. That is a six for Sybil. Three for Ulrich. And then obviously whatever your well, it should automatically add your constitution modifier and so there's no problem there. And this is bringing everybody to level 15 and Ulrich to level 16. I have to share this because I'm incredibly excited. I am finally proficient in wisdom saving throws, the thing that I spent 11 levels fighting with and constantly rolling ones and zeros on. Hell I, yeah, I what is so that? I'm so happy. Hmm? What was that? How did you get that? Slippery mind. Beautiful. It takes a long time to get there, but it's worth it. Yeah, and just let me know if anybody has to do selection on anything. Um, just send me a message and let me know what it is. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to do it right this second. I don't think there's a whole lot at level six, 16 and 15. Actually, for level fifteen, most of you guys should be getting your final, um, if not close to your final subclass uh, ability. So, well, for those of you who are not multi-classed, don't forget to update token things. Yes. All right, so manage character. Oh, my basics, my basic HP went down one. Did yeah. you input the uh, the manual roll to your hit point total? Thought I did. So you had forty. What was it? Forty. Forty-one. Seven, forty-one. Okay, so forty-one plus six is forty-seven. 
plus whatever your constitution modifier is, right? Yeah, right now, negative one. No. Okay. Uh, well, no, 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 no. It doesn't, it, it, it's whatever your actual base is. A disease is never going to affect a level up. That would be really fucked up. Well, I figured it would just get added back in when my when it's fixed. That's true. Te that's true. Technically, that is the case. So, but what is for the sake of updating your token? What is what is that bonus normally? Uh, plus one. Plus one. Okay, so you will be forty-one. So you're at forty-eight, right? Should be forty-five. Uh, forty because I, oh, I rolled, oh, you a, rolled I a three. Rolled a three. You rolled a three. Yeah. My bad. I'm looking at all the sixes, assuming that it was also you. I mean, I'll take it. All right, I got you. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you have to take uh, any any sort of feat spell selection, any funky options, just shoot me a message. Uh, no rush on that end. Uh, with that being said, you do rest throughout the evening successfully with no interruption, except for the um, aching boils and blisters that are forming all over Winnie and uh, Ulrich's body. Uh, as a ranger, I can swap out one spell, correct? A, a single spell, yep. Of a level you can cast. Alright, awesome. Thank you. At least I'm pretty sure that's what the ranger packet says. Let us take a look. Uh, let's see. Spellcasting, spellcasting, spells you know. Uh, additionally, when you gain a level, you can choose one spell the ranger knows and replace it with another spell from the ranger list, which also must be a level for which you have spell slots. Yep. All right, so Ulrich and Winnie, as you two come to in the morning, I need you both to give me a constitution saving throw. Uh, All right, so you both succeed, and you are, instead of taking the horrific amounts of damage that you would have taken, you are actually both healed of one point of con and one point of charisma. So Winnie, you have no con damage at this point, and you are down three charisma. Ulrich, you are down two and two. So you guys both wake up. Uh, it was kind of a restless night, but you do manage to get a little bit of sleep, and when you wake up, you realize that some of the boils have actually receded back into your bodies. Neither of you look worse, you both look a little bit better. Weird question. Uh, I doubt that, but lay it on me. Since we leveled while my con was down, do I get the plus two for what my normal con would be, or do I get the plus one for what my con was at the time we leveled? Well, if you were sick, uh, I mean, what do you mean? Like, I, I don't understand what you're so, saying. Cause why so does, why does leveling change your con? Because you add your modifier, and I went from a 14 th to a 13, so it was only plus one when I was sick, but my base is 14, so do I get the plus two, or do I get the plus one? Wait, say that again? You th th That's only for hit points. That has nothing to do with... That's what, talking, that's what I was talking about for my hit points. The, do hit I get... point, the hit points are moot at this point. It's always... It, Ulrich just had this conversation with me. When, when, those, when that gets changed, it will automatically repopulate. Okay. Because you will then gain a bonus in your hit point modifier. So it will automatically shift it for you. So always do it based on what is currently on your character sheet. Thank you. Because remember, if you get hit with something like out in the wild that reduces your con to one, you will then lose 40 something hit points based on your, you know, your level plus whatever your modifier was. That all comes off immediately. That makes sense. Okay. Thank Same you. thing if you gain something, like if you gain, um, what is it, bear's endurance, you automatically start gaining hit points because it's a temporary effect. So. Got it. Yep. Okay, so you guys awake in the morning. And you find yourselves back in the uh, in the main uh, the main hall uh, for breakfast. It is officially Sunday, the second of Agtet, at seven o'clock in the morning. We'll say eight o'clock in the morning. What would you like to do? Uh, 
Um, so I guess waking up and feeling feeling better. Um, better-ish, at least. Much better than you were a little while ago, for sure. Um, probably set up and uh, look around at who's here and how people are looking. That would be my first concern, is, like, what does Ulrich look like? What does the rest of the party look like? Uh, specifically, Emig. Has he come down with it yet? Emig looks fit as a fucking fiddle. It looks like he has had absolutely zero effect from any of that. And to be clear, he was the only one who rolled a success on every single save against that shit. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um... Uh, Ulrich looks better. I'm not perfect, but he looks... He looks better than he did last night, for sure. By a long shot. Alright. Uh, so I definitely would, um, like, for my spells and stuff, I would take Greater Restoration <laughs> again. Um, and I think the first thing I'd probably do is cast Greater Restoration on Ulrich. Okay. Holy shit. Ulrich just gained a lot of hit points. How, how do you have 56 hit points? Because I got a plus one back to my constitution, so that gave me 16 from the 40 that it was showing that I had. So I should have actually more than that. Because your cotton's still down. Yeah. Okay, hold on one sec, though, because something's not right. So before... So before... Let me just check here. Give me a sec. I'm dragging you off real quick. So you actually... So according to what I'm seeing... You had when you guys left Sea Whip before you before you became legitimately sick and the, the token was updated, you actually had seventy one hit points as your base. So yep. you should have seventy one plus your four, which is seventy five, should be your total. Yeah, once I get okay, all of my constitution back. back. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Okay, excellent. Um Okay, sorry, go ahead. Uh Candace. Oh uh, yes, I'm gonna cast Greater Restoration on Ulrich. Okay. I'm going to take the diamond dust out of the uh, bag of holding. Okay, you can remove it. And I'm expending the spell slot. Okay, and as you perform the incantation and sprinkle the spell dust, or the uh, spell dust, well, it kind of is spell dust, the diamond dust, uh, which manifests as the restoration, again, it kind of hits, and as it hits his scales, it sizzles uh, where each piece uh, affects him, and as you, that happens, you see the boils and the blisters kind of um, peel off from his face, taking dead pieces of scale with it. Uh, as they fall to the ground, Ulrich, you are healed of both uh, your con by two and charisma by two. You are officially healed of blue rot. And then she's going to reach in the bag of holding and pull out uh, the other another bag of diamond dust and kind of thrust it at Ulrich, like, okay, your turn. And then I will do the same. <laughs> okay, so you perform the incantation by expending another charge of the diamond dust. Yep. Um, and as you do so, because a greater restoration heals four points, but when you only had three left, thankfully you saved, because otherwise it could have been a little bit of a different story. Uh, you, uh, as a whole, um, you are officially cured of blue rot. And at this point, nobody shows signs of the disease. So you can change your cons back to normal and charismas. Thank you. A bit. This fucking guy. That's what happened to me earlier. I, or maybe it was last night, actually. I was trying to read something. Yeah, it was last night. I was trying to read something, and D&D &D &D Beyond's like, here's her plan! Yoink. Alright, so you all gather around. Um, and, uh, as, as the rest of you are kind of coming in from your little quarantine, uh, Winnie and Ulrich are just finishing their incantations on each other. The boils are peeling off, and it appears that they have been completely cured of this disease, of this arcane disease. Um, I'm gonna roll some hit dice, because I still have some damage on me. Before the long rest, if that's okay. Sure. Let's not do that again. That sucked. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Gartok, I can't let you do that because you have to. You can spend hit dice during short rests and regain during a long rest. So if you're going to do it during a long rest, you're just going to spend. Obviously, you're going to gain some back. You'll gain, what, you're level 15, so you'll gain 7 back anyways, so. Yeah, that was awful. 
Um, four was enough. I got it. I used four of them. So I, with that, should I keep them marked? Um. Well, you're gonna. So how many are you down right now? I have only four. I've only used four. Oh well, no, because you regain seven during a long rest because it's half of your level. So yeah, you you, you should have all of them back now. The protection from poison is only an hour. I'm going to take that off. Yes. Um, so as everybody walks in, Winnie will sit down at the table and kind of look up look up at everybody and, and wave. So protection from poison didn't work on that, but uh, greater restoration did, so we should be okay now. Now that we're all thinking clearly what's... What are we doing next? We should probably get back to the flotilla since dwarves are going to be meeting us there. An awkward should... silence creeps over the room. We should check in with um, the people we just left as cats blinking on the name for underwater area. Um, we should check in with them before we decide one way or another. We told them we'd be back. Um, did you end up messaging the flotilla? Looks to Ulrich. Yep. What did, what did they say? That they would be welcomed, so. Then, my thoughts would be that we should go back down below and make sure that that evacuation goes safely. They are probably already gone. When we left, that? when we left, they were leaving in a mere few hours. So, and we should check in with them and make sure that that went smoothly. Whether that's checking in with the flotilla directly or why don't we go to the flotilla save resources instead of? and then see where we're at there, and then if they haven't arrived yet, then message them. Ooh, testy. Because using sending is also meaning being able to bring people back from the dead, so I like saving those spells as much as possible. I also like being able to come back from the dead. I like more when that's not necessary, but well, what is the bigger plan? We go to the flotilla, and then from where? because we're going to have to teleport at some point today. If we can get this down to one teleport as opposed to two, wouldn't that be less resources overall? We would only be going back to Flo Flotilla because we need to meet with the dwarves because they're going to be waiting for us as it is. So that's kind of the only place we really need to go. If they're there. Otherwise, hypothetically, if they're not there, if those from Sea Whip aren't there, then what would the other plans be? What would the next steps be? I'm really waiting on the dwarves. Like, yeah, and then, I, and... Think, I think going back to the flotilla makes the most sense at this point because that's where we have two, two of our progressions. Emig? I just wasn't sure if it would be bad to use resources from here or the resources of the flotilla while while we wait. I will, of course, defer to your judgment. Uh, the only thing is, I don't know if anybody on the flotilla is able to let us know when everyone's arrived. I guess if it's... Um... We could try to... I, I understand what you're saying, Sybil, but... One way or another, I think um, we're going to end up using a resource of some kind. So, Ulrich, uh, since it really comes down to your resources, what do you think? I think getting back to the central point of the flotilla is the best move, and then planning something from there if the dwarves aren't there or ready yet. At, that, at least at that point, Sybil, we could help with receiving Sea Whip. If, if they're there, we can make sure they're settled. Perhaps we could even meet up with that young druid if he went with his She'll nod. Um, and for the record, she's absolutely started making coffee using Dwendar's fresh, fresh <laughs> press this morning, because that is a crucial detail. 
It definitely um, smells delicious. It's very, very strong. Almost, almost an espresso roast as opposed to like even the darkest of darks. Looks, th these guys are fucking sailors at heart. They gotta stay awake. <laughs> they got shit to do. Yep, she's that's that's why she's actually uh, contributing. She has coffee. I understand. <laughs> um. All right. Is there anything else that we would need from Rodicia? We should assume that we won't want to spend the resources to come back here. Do we have plenty of food? Um, potions, everything else. I know we went through quite a few with this. You are all feeling better, yes? You look... You look much less like shit, but... I feel like a million gold now. Wait, I'm asking Grover to Gartok. Big number. Much more than four. <laughs> we'll put up four fingers this time. Oh, well done. Can you guys on stream hear that fucking vibration? We've been quite some time. Those potions, by the way, they are incredible, can. but nothing seems to be retained once they wear off. So that's something that we should all be no. aware of. You guys can't hear the vibration, the humming. Okay, so plan. Go back to the flotilla. Uh, as far as resources, we don't want to take too much from here either because we still have soldiers here and people living here as well. Um, Pretty sure we bought him out of most of everything last time anyway that he would that we could part with. So that's true. Uh, and even when I was speaking with him, he doesn't have healing potions. Um, I think he has a few more lesser restoration, but we still have six in the bag of holding right now. Um, Did we buy might... him? Did he have any more teleport scrolls? I don't remember if we bought him out of those. I don't remember. We'd have to ask. I'm guessing we probably bought him out of them. Yeah, I can, I'll just confirm it for you right now. You guys did buy him out. Because you came back to him the second time and you were like, okay, give us everything you fucking got. I have a question for you, Xavier. What's up? For plane shift. Um, uh, so it, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, so it says that I need a forked metal rod worth at least 250 gold points. Or, yeah, gold. For what? For, um, uh, plane shift. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, if it's got a value, you need it. Right, and I can't... There'd be nothing from here that, that I'd be able to find around the area, right, for that? There'd be nothing... What did you say? It, from here, from the grove, that I could find with that value that is that specific. A forked metal rod worth right. that... I mean, what are okay. you going to grow a metal rod out of? A forked metal rod? Right. You know what I mean? There's no... I mean, um, metal trees don't exist, so... Yeah, I just wanted to make sure because I'm not going to have that in my memory if I'm not if I can't use it. It's a waste of a spell slot. That's fair. Could we not check in with our magical dealer and see if he's got it? Yeah, guys, just you know, I have a so I have a. We uh, could try. Uh, I have but a lumbar I, support. It has to be from here. It, so that's so what I'm, if I'm he gets us something the from the plane of fire. Of <laughs> oh, and could you ask Falcona? See if she may know how to make, acquire, or otherwise provide. Falcona, Metals. who is clearly sitting across the table from you guys, looks over and says, It's okay to address me directly. I won't try to enchant you or captivate you in any way. I, I'm a person, too. I'm gonna shift where my map was focusing so I can notice that stuff now. <laughs> uh, uh, apologies. As she nonchalantly puts a berry in her mouth. That she hasn't she, that had she her grew coffee from yet. her fingertip. <laughs> she hasn't had her coffee yet. Um, metal, of. metal isn't something that we can create. Uh, it's not even something that, quite frankly, we like to have on our person as much as possible. So, um, and I really can't think of any way that the Grove or Falcona, she'll like look over toward her as she's speaking, would be able to create something that and it's not our it's not my plane so i wouldn't know where to find something like that. well that's a fair point we are at the mercy of the denizens of the feywild however you do have the gnome that perhaps have you talked to him about this yet no i was gonna ask i just he needs to make sure that it's from this plane otherwise it will have us end up on a plane that might not be as desirable if we were to go that route. I could always use, um, 
I could always use um, teleportation through plants if need be, as long as there's a plant large enough to do so. Oh, well, here, that's no here, problem. Yes. <laughs> Everywhere starts, else is the issue. Yeah, she just starts putting fingers out, and like, there's one that way, and over there, one, two that way. Yes, one here, oh. here is plentiful, but our other destinations, not so much. Um, the flotilla, they primarily have low to the ground and root uh, based plants, and in the, I guess underwater, we could maybe go into the, um, the seaweed forest if there's any dire seaweed, but it's just not as easy. It's fine for now. Um, I think well, it's worth, gonna... it's worth asking if he has anything. Maybe, or even if he has one tied to the material plane, that's at least something as well. That's true. What about um, your grandfather? He's a druid as well, so I doubt he has anything metal. But he, if he's a druid like you are, he would also have this spell potentially and might have the resources. I am completely spitballing here. I know nothing about how any of this works. I don't well, we know can start why with... we're looking for a metal rod in general. So that so. I could teleport us from plane to plane if Auric is unable. But, Ulrich, your magic does not require this? Nope. Our magics are of two different origins. Yep, she's just gonna do the... Just like, yep, of course it is, kind of expression. The, I'm 15 levels of still fucking confused. Um, you know, while we're talking about Gordishu, um, Ulrich, if I had been a little bit more in my right mind last night, I would have thought to do this, but... I don't think you'd have been able to, or wanting to attune to something anyway. And she's going to take out the Cloak of Protection. This uh, Bradicio identified as a Cloak of Protection. It might be very useful for you in particular, Ulrich, unless someone else in the group would prefer to have it, but she's going to set it on the table. I mean, I like being protected, so that's a good thing. It could be very beneficial, especially because from what I understand, it should help with um, when you have something specifically targeting you that you specifically need to be able to protect yourself against, it can assist with that as well. Okie dokie. Is anybody opposed to Ulrich having this? I'm opposed to Ulrich not alive. having this. <laughs> okay, she's gonna like kind of shove it across the <laughs> across the table to Ulrich. So it's the, I'm gonna take it out of the bag of holding. It's a cloak of protection. Yep. You can add a cloak of protection to your inventory, and uh, for the sake of brevity, you can go ahead and attune it, um, because your guys' pacing right now is going to be slow enough for you to allow the four hours in order to do it, so. Okay. Unless you do something fucking crazy, which I'm not anticipating, so. Hoping for, not anticipating. <laughs> What's that, a challenge? You shush you. Um, we Gartok. get ourselves into enough trouble on Sunday nights, okay? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, Gartok, did you take both of your bows back from the bag of holding? Would you like your other one? Or do you want it to stay in there? <laughs> Can keep. Okay. For now. And when he starts kind of it, it's sort of like with a new energy, she plops the bag of holding on the table and just starts digging through it like um, Mary Poppins style, where she's like almost looking inside. She's gonna s make sure that we are divvying out our shit and we stop being stupid. Um, so I'm gonna, just gonna be looking through my inventory real quick, and I might be handing things out. That's half the battle. Remembering you have that shit in, in in your inventory is the other half. Right, especially right. But at least that's not just on me because right now I'm hoarding all the resources, so I want everybody sure. else to take a full <clears throat> amount of blame too. <laughs> totally fair. Uh, Gartok will give you a trident to keep, because he looks barely able to hold everything he's holding. Trident? Okay. Give. 
Yeah, um, she'll hold open the bag. Kind of the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Yes, put it... Go ahead. <laughs> he doesn't know what you're doing. I know. <laughs> nope, nope. Gartok, you should hold on to that. That could be useful later. It's gone. <laughs> you can you can take it back. Can anybody use an oil of sharpness? Does anybody want to have that? Okay, she'll hand I'll hand the oil of sharpness over to Sybil. Wait, hang on. I have it already. One second. Let me double check. Yeah, you had one and we have one in the bag of holding. Uh I I can use that, but you should probably keep that in the bag for now. I'll remember that you have it making a note. Okay, yeah, you remember. On the off chance something horrifically drowning related happens. I am going to hand our scroll of teleportation to Ulrich, so we will not have one in the bag of holding, and Ulrich will have one on his person. Okay, and that, for the record, is the last one in your guys' possession, because yes. he used his, so... <clears throat> it makes more sense for you to have it. Yeah. Here. Dumb talk return. <laughs> that he doth do. <laughs> See? He just gets it. <laughs> no, I don't get it anymore. That's why I know. Talk. Um, Auric, would you like to keep a scroll of sending? We have four. Do you want one on you? Uh, yeah. Okay. That'll work. I will hand one of those over. Okay, you can add a third level spell scroll of sending. Gartok, I'm assuming you're good on arrows with that quiver, huh? Okay. And she's gonna take out some, she's gonna take out some of the uh, sea taters and she's gonna just eat a couple of them. Because I don't want them to go bad since we paid for them. Okay. Uh, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Okay, Since Great. you are eating them raw and she told you to cook them. Oh, she did. That's right. Holy shit, I didn't think I'd actually have to use this. Give me a second. 13. Okay, so when he pops uh, one of these, essentially it looks like an uncooked, like radish hybrid potato. Uh, she takes a couple bites off of, uh, of, of a few of the pieces, chews it around, swallows it, takes a sip of water. <coughs> Ooh. When your mouth starts to burn, your tongue starts to swell up, you immediately begin to gag. You can either willingly vomit up the potatoes, or you can just keep it down and be ladylike. Um, choices. Oh, she would. She would probably turn to the side, and as soon as she knows something is wrong, try to throw it up. Yeah. So when he turns to the side, you did succeed at the Constitution saving throw. So you turn to the side over the chair, and she just projectile vomits <laughs> all the pieces of the potato uh, onto the ground next to Falcona, and Falcona looks at you with her eyes wide. Why did you eat those uncooked, Winfina? I've eaten a lot of things uncooked that people like cooked. I thought it was a preference thing, but now I know. Archdruid, you must always cook your sea taters. You're welcome, everybody. The big dumb return. <laughs> <laughs> So when he wipes the, uh... <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll like wipe her, um, she'll like wipe her mouth and try to like get herself clean and then go back to... Actually, she'd probably clean up her mess too. She shouldn't just leave vomit. So interestingly enough, as you puke onto the floor, um, the, uh, the earth, the grove just kind of like begins to kind of undulate. And you see the vomit just kind of, like, recede into the ground. And, um, you see a singular, small, yellow daisy. That worked out nicely. Um, so I didn't mean to share that, but the, the raging waves, how much of that gets used each time Sipple makes coffee? Because we had 50 pounds of it, but 
fuck, it's not much. I would say for 50 pounds, for, so for one, we'll call it use. 50 pounds will give you 500 uses. Okay. So you can go ahead and add 500 uses. <laughs> you had 499 uses. There That's you go. Have fun tracking that, assholes. And I know you will, too. Now, now here's the question. Can we use it all before the campaign ends? That's the challenge. <laughs> Not without palpitations. Yeah, fucking Sybil's over there just fucking sweating. I, I didn't even know my people could sweat. <laughs> Did we get two bags? Or is it just the one? Just the one. Yeah, it's okay, just a lot. Few. Okay, maybe I'll have to start drinking more coffee. It'd be a shame. All right. Anything else, Candace? Uh, no, I don't think so. Nothing that seems worth it. Okay, and remember, if you guys had anything to add, just add add the items now, so we don't forget about them. They don't get lost in cyberspace. Okay. So, what is your intention at this point? I actually have a bit of a question for you, Kevin. Sure. So, with this level up, um, it's a bit of a milestone for blood main with regard to control. Uh, did he feel anything different? Yeah, give me one sec. Okay, so... So yes, this is, um, this is a big level um, for you. So during your next transformation is when you will really feel the effects of it um, because unless you are, unless you are invoking uh, the transformation, you won't really know how it how it's going to impact you um you do feel because you don't really sleep anymore but during your during your reading and your invest your investiture into the book um you do feel the presence of the deep old one very very close to you kind of over your shoulder watching you and every so often as you go to turn a page um you swear that as you look down your hands become thin like um and we'll say for the sake of it uh, at the tail end of your of your rest um as you're going to close your book and stand up whereas normally when you would close it water would kind of rise up and out of it instead about 50 free falling loosely for lack of a better term shark teeth rise up and out of the water and kind of spill onto the ground in front of you indicating some new new step forward in knowledge uh the other part of knowledge that you would have learned from that piece that was unlocked in the inkiness right before you guys took the rest was uh, was knowledge of um of overcoming frenzy 
Blood Frenzy in specific. And uh, I will. I don't have it on here right now, Kurt. But when I have a chance, I will upload. Because right now, because you've officially tiered up to Greater Wear Shark, um, so I will send you that that card. Tight. Okay. So I think um, I think our next move will be to get to the flotilla. Yes. Everyone? Agreed. All right. Um. Do you want to check to see if he's got the little forky thingy you need? I do. I'd like to do that before we go. Um. Yeah, I guess I can just talk to him really fast and see if he if he doesn't, then it's fine. Like I said, it needs to be guaranteed from here. Otherwise, I don't know where we'll end up. So here, I would say here are the material plane. You need one, at least that one too, possibly. Okay. Um, I will go talk with him then. Okay. <clears throat> so you head over to uh, Brodicio's um, Brodicio's little uh, sanctum. Um, and you find him inside. Um, I'd walk in and say, have a good morning, Radicia. He says, ah, well, good morning there, Winfina. It's uh, glad to, uh, to uh, see you. I'm uh, hoping that everything worked out okay when I talked to your friend Bloodman last night. He, uh, he seemed uh, a bit concerned about you. Boletta is in the middle of, uh, of cleaning a coin. Uh, she has a big stack of new coins to clean through. And she kind of looks up and... Um, Winnie would, like, offer her hand out toward, toward, toward Boletta, and if she... Um... Seemed happy about it. She gave her, like, a little scritch. Yeah, so you put your hand out, and Boletta kind of, like, looks cockeyed at you for a moment, and then she reaches up and she puts a gold piece in your hand. And, oh, no. And, uh, Perdisha goes, No, no, Boletta, that is for <laughs> us. She is not, uh, requesting money. She is, uh... What are you doing? She's so sweet. I was just trying to say hello. Oh, uh, Boletta, she was trying to say hello. She got confused about hello and give me money. Boletta looks a little confused, but takes the coin back and continues to polish it, and then she puts her hand up. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just do that back to her. Um, I was actually coming... I have kind of a strange question. Um, so the first the first part of it is, do you, have, do you have anything that you know for sure came from this plane? He kind of looks around. Anything... He, like, picks up, uh, he like picks up the chair next to him. This chair came from this right. plane. I think you grew it. It well, it needs. I, I did. It needs to be very specific. I just didn't know if you had something. If you had items, because what I'm looking for is I need a forked piece of metal. Moment. Forked metal. You're trying to travel the planes. Correct. But it, uh, what I'm hoping. Well, you know, then it needs to be a certain value, and it needs to be from either this plane or the material plane. But this plane would be great because then we can get back here. Yeah, right. Well, uh, as far as uh, as far as this plane is concerned, I don't have any contacts yet. Uh, I've right. been very nervous. It's only been a few days since we've been here, and I've been uh, not really ready to venture outside of the confines of the grove because uh, there are bad things in the Feywild, and I unfortunately don't know a whole lot about uh, about those bad things, except that they are terrible, or so I hear. Yeah. Um, okay. But as soon as I can make contacts with uh, the outside world, I will be more than happy to try to um, obtain something that you need, as well as restock my supplies, because my supply people are really running thin. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll all just be back on the material plane and getting life back to as normal as possible soon. But um, do you have anything similar from the material plane? Do you have anything... A metal, forked metal rod worth 250 gold from the material plane? 
Well, it's more than what it's worth. I could sell it to you for a thousand and it wouldn't make it any better. The value comes from the enchanted gems that go inside of it. It's called the tuning fork. And yes, they are aligned to... Uh, never mind, you know, it's magic. At least I think you know, I hope you know. Uh, I, I think I actually may have one for the prime material, but uh, let me ask you about this. Doesn't your... Uh, don't your allies have uh, a way to use the big gate that you created to just bring yourself from point A to point B? We do, but we like having a backup plan for a backup plan. This would be that. Oh, all right, fair enough. Yeah, I can sell it to you for 200 gold pieces. That's no problem. He uh, reaches into another small sack, pulls out what literally looks like a little tuning fork, um, but it's gold-plated, and you see small gems laid uh, on the interior of the fork and then down the uh, the actual the, the shaft of it. She'll take it kind of like, mm, and put it into the bag of holding. Wonderful, thank you. 200 gold pieces. I yeah, can't, I can't she'll discount. Hand that over. Look, I can't discount you on something like that because otherwise it won't work. No, it's just the way of the magic. That's absolutely fine. So she'll hand, o- hand that over, no problem. Um, doesn't even question it. Actually, she'll put it in front of Boletta. <laughs> the, here, here oh, you. oh, the, the gold. Yeah. Boletta puts the coin in, another, in the stack that she's kind of putting in, and then you hear an audible. <sighs> and then she takes a coin off the pile and starts to polish it. Here's a shit ton more work, you little fuck. Um, okay, yeah, thank you very much for that. It's, uh, it's gonna, hopefully we won't need it, but now at least we'll have it if we do. Okay, um, I think we're off again. If you need anything while we're there, um, let us know. I never thought I'd be saying that to you, because it's usually the other way around, but with you being kind of stuck here, it might be helpful. I'm sorry, what? If you need anything while we're on the material plane, if there's anything we can do for you, as opposed to it usually being the other way around, just let us know. Perfect. Kill the fucking world breaker so I can go back to business. That's the plan. That is my wish. Thank you. So... Okay. Uh, he actually did. She'll she'll um like kind of shake the bag we're holding a little bit as she walks in. He had one from the um. He had one from the material plane. So worst comes to worst. You're gonna have to start collecting those. For anywhere we may have to go. Yeah, I think that's probably not a bad idea. Um, I don't have anything else I need to do here. Anybody else? Nope. I'm ready when you guys are. Um, It will down the last bit of coffee. Falcona, we will be back and we'll try to let you know before we appear, assuming we have the resources to do so. She nods. Um, she nods and um, and uh, kind of stands, and she says, "I will clean the linen of boil innards and ichor while we await." You could just burn them. Oh, we probably shouldn't set fire inside of the Archdruid's Grove. We control burn. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Falcona looks at Winnie. No, that's, um... The fire set a good foundation for it, Ulrich, but we try to avoid that within the... Uh, thank you, Falcona, for everything, and try to return more healthy. Perfect. Until we meet again. She starts to kind of like fold the linens up, tie them into big satchels. Um, I think if, as long as she wouldn't like tell Winnie no, Winnie would, would help her with that part too. Feeling a little okay. guilty about just leaving a mess there. Yeah, it's and then, horrific. Yeah. And then um, replace new linens and everything too. And then, okay, I'm, I'm ready. Everyone I- else knows. 
I'm going to send a message to Dwendar that we will be teleporting and to ask him if the if Sea Whip has arrived yet. Okay. Um, so you send the message to Dwendar. Um, you feel it go through. Um, and you receive a response. Different plane, got to roll. Sorry. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, go ahead and higher low. We're going to go high this time. All right. Oh, you're good, 73. All right, so it goes through. Uh, the message gets through, and you receive response. Uh, and you hear Dwendar say, No, the people of Sea Whip should not be here probably until Wednesday the 5th, if they're traveling at full speed. All right, I let... I don't know we're coming and Sea Whip has not arrived yet. He doesn't think they'll be here for a little bit still. There's some travel still, so. Everybody ready? Mm-hmm. I'll get into trans transportation formation. Transportation formation, go. Go. <laughs> I'll Quick, fiddle. everyone pose up. <laughs> I'll grab the little chunk of wood that I took from the Fotilla. And use it as the focus for the spells and cast it. Okay, so you perform teleport. Uh, now, for this one, you are going to have to roll. We are going to have to roll because they do not have a permanent circle, which guarantees. However, you do have an associated object, which is good. Where did you take that from, by the way? You busted that off of something, right? It was a piece of on the boat on the ship. Okay. All right, so normally this would guarantee you a 100% chance of success, but since it's a scrap of one of the boats, that could have been a patch from somewhere else. I'm going to say instead of a 100% chance of success, there is a 1% chance of failure. No pressure. So, high or low? High. Thirty-three. You're just fine. So your incantation goes off without a hitch. The lot of you feel the energy ripple around you as you are cascaded through, uh, through the ether, and you find yourselves aboard the flotilla. Give me one moment. All right. So you are aboard the flotilla. Um, as you guys kind of spring into existence, it's getting easier and easier for you guys to teleport now. Those first few times were really rough, but now that you're used to it, you kind of have realized that as you are shuddering into your new place of existence, that if you take a couple of steps forward, it kind of helps slow and ease your body down, including your stomach, and everyone's kind of gotten used to that at this point. So you guys ease up. Um, you come to a stop and you find yourselves in the flotilla. What would you like to do? Uh, for the sake of brevity, we're going to say that it is 10 a.m. Next time I'm going to teleport, it's like five inches above the ground. Ah! Everybody's just walking like jackasses. It looks like, <laughs> you know, fucking somebody ran off of a cliff in a Looney Tunes show. You just stomp on Bloodmane's foot first thing. Sorry. Oh, don't do that. He goes into a rage. <laughs> God. All right. Um. My feetsies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So once we get here, uh, just um, first thing, just because of everything that we've been going through, look around and make sure everything's good. I know we just talked to them, but <laughs> still look around and make sure everything's good. Yeah. I mean, there's a few of the of the members of the Raging Waves who kind of are, are stunned for a moment uh, as you kind of just materialize. Um, but besides that, once, you know, people realize who you are, yeah, everything, they're, they're not under siege or anything like that, that's for sure. Okay. And can we still see Grimm's, uh, his um, airship? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep, Just airship sure. is still up there and still tied down. It looks like they've actually moved it to one of the one of the non-combatant ships, um, kind of like to the south of where these main ships are around the flotilla. 
Um, probably as a defensive measure in case you guys do come under attack, but... I just wanted to make sure he didn't... Or maybe so that people can actually fucking sleep without all that humming of an airship right above them. <laughs> okay. Um, alright, yeah, so... Uh, now what? Do we just... We need to just wait, huh? Maybe we can ask Grim how long it'll be until she's here? Uh, yeah, we can check in and check in to see how, see if there's been anything that's happened since, you know, the day or so we've been gone. To see if, like, the undead have done anything or moved or anything. Okay. Um, who are you going to talk to? Let's ask Dar see if, uh, if there's been any changes or any developments. Okay, so it's easy enough to find Dwendar. Uh, he is in the captain's quarters in the bottom of his own boat. Um, with him there, you do find Grim. Um, and they're just kind of hanging out. I mean, there's not a whole lot for him to do um, while things are kind of in progress here. So just to remind you of who is involved in this little conversation, we've got Dwendar the Tempest and our buddy with the beard, Grim Quickshot. All right, so, uh, yeah, you guys uh, come in. Dwendar kind of nods to you uh, as, as you enter one by one. Um, looks over at, uh, at Grim and he says, we can finish that conversation another time. And uh, Grim kind of smiles and he goes, oh, it's not over yet, big guy. Uh, Twindar then looks to you guys. Glad to see that you all made it as well as you did. Look a little beat up. Look a little tired. You were gone for a while and we didn't hear from you. Is everything good? Undead oh. sharks and whales and... Yeah, that was fun. Uh, sea Whip was under attack when we got there by the undead. That's why we ended up requesting to see if they could come here and thank you, by the way. Well good thing that you got there before it was too late it's later than I would have liked but it's better than nothing hmm. well the good thing is you've got the innate ability and he kind of points over towards Ulrich to reach out to your allies so just make sure you stay in contact yeah we're getting we're, we're trying to be better about that like knocking before teleporting onto people's boats Oh, that's a good thing, too, yes. It would have definitely alarmed everybody if uh, you would have just shown up. Um. Has there has anything changed? Has the undead moved at all? Anything happened while we were gone? Well, the ships we've got blockaded haven't moved at all. Um, the progress at this point, as far as their land forces are concerned, they're probably a few days out from Orcus's Chosen to the far east. Um, which means that they're barely, you know, halfway through the length of that island. And if they continue to push, um, if we continue to maintain our guys here, um, and hope that they don't spring an assault on us from the sea, then we should be okay for at least a little while. Although, looking at the map and looking at, uh, how fast they're progressing... I have a sneaking suspicion we don't have much more than a couple of weeks before they're going to boat back up and need to move. With that being said, we did get confirmation from the dwarves, thanks to little Grim here, and Grim looks up. Little Grim! Okay, big Dwendar. Mm, kind of like that. Keep that up. Um, yeah, we've got... Word from the dwarves that uh, they should be arriving, both of them should be arriving tomorrow before lunch. Sea Whip, probably not until Wednesday. Okay. But they are on the move, successfully. Now, here's okay. the question. Once we have these new allies, he looks at Grim and potential new allies, and we can secure additional sort resources what then do we move forward and a 
assault the dead? Or are there things that need to be done in that time? I know Emig had a trip he needs to make as well still. Um, hmm. Outside of that, she's going to look around at the rest of the group. I was... Well, my thought was to try and just to take the undead while they're here. One less thing we have to worry about with big boy over there. Well, obviously that's what the intention is. The question is, do we want to do it as soon as we've acquired our resources? Or do you have any? Because when you approached me initially, you had said that you had many allies that you intended on having conversations with. Now, right. if those allies are capable of performing here, great. If not, if it's for whatever's going to happen with the World Breaker, also great. I just need to know when to have my people ready and to have all of us collectively prepared to assault this armada. I think when you would look over at Emig, kind of looking for guidance or direction on this part, because this is not her strong side. What day is it? Is it Monday it's, or Tuesday? It's Sunday. Oh, it's Sunday. Okay, so we yeah. got some time. <clears throat> if we have to wait until Wednesday for those from Sea Whip to make it here, we'll do that. Um, and then if we've got our, our potential allies, the dwarves, coming in, uh, we'll need to discuss with them. But I believe once we've collected those allies up, those are the ones who will help us most against the undead. And then we should strike fast and strike true. <laughs> I am the Maelstrom. <laughs> I am the coming storm. So, I will make sure that our men and women are prepared for war, and that we are ready to pull anchors and get the uh, children, elderly, and sick out of reach of any combat. Um, we will make sure that we partner with the Sea Whippites, Sea Whippians, the Merfolk, once they arrive and we'll figure their piece of the puzzle out. I'm hopeful the dwarves will agree, because if we can get things in the air, we've already got advantage over these bastards. And if we can nip it in the bud and bring these undead to their knees, whew, that's one big piece of the puzzle we don't have to worry about anymore. The people of Sea Whip are bringing with them uh, some military units, but six spear rammers and two harpoon ships. To my knowledge. Hmm. I'm familiar with harpoon ships. I'm not entirely sure what a spear rammer is, but sounds promising. It may be those creatures they ride into the sides of ships at speeds to poke holes in them. Oh, yes, the whale-like creatures. Um, yes, I, I, I think I, I've heard of them. I don't know if I've seen them before, but definitely heard of them. They're an elusive bunch. I thought they rode dolphins, though, don't they? Maybe I'm wrong. Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> right, so, we have, uh, we have another day or so before they arrive, and, uh, Wednesday when the, uh, when the merfolk arrive. So, we will, uh, just stay here then obviously anybody is free to leave and do what they need to do in the meantime but uh if you need me or my mine we're at your disposal thank you very much again for everything but especially for taking on sea whip uh we've had trade relations with the merfolk for ages uh, they're decent people a little bit elusive but they're good people, so no worries here. Especially if they're bringing harpoon ships. And now I want to see their spear-laden dolphins, or whatever they are. Spear rammers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, all of this going down. I haven't seen them in combat outside of what we just saw, and unfortunately they've already been fairly depleted of resources uh, in general, so... I could see how they could be fierce, though. Sure. Well, 
I am going to, um, I am going to take my leave for just a bit to attend to a couple of things uh, with my lieutenants and to ensure that uh, we have everything situated the way that it needs to be prior to the dwarves' arrival. So if you'll excuse me, um, please you know, help yourselves to whatever it is you may need, and um, we'll see you soon. Yes, thank you. One thing you may want to know with the undead that we discovered while we were fighting them in Sea Whip is that they have an arcane disease that they have developed called Blue Rot. Um, several of us came to it. We've been cured. We've been fixed. That's not a problem here. But it is contracted when they bite or scratch you, uh, and it can be fatal. Fucking lovely. And he turns and he continues to walk. His head kind of hung low and just shaking like, great, add it to the fucking list. But at least it's the list you know. That's true. Yeah, it's not the list of things you don't know. Um, We've like quintupled our communication ability with just those two, two messages. Hey, we're coming and here's the possible threat. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing good, guys. We're getting better. <laughs> Chat only took figured out. several years. Yeah, that's all right. I wonder how we'd handle a wish spell now. I think you'd avoid it. A couple levels. We would. We I was wouldn't say, I think you'd it. avoid it like the fucking plague. Well, we'll see. Ulrich's about to change the fabric of fucking time and space. All right, guys. We'll go ahead and end here for today as it is 2.03. Um, however... Looking at my notes, we have D&D &D in two weeks on the 3rd, and then we have a two-week break, and then we play on the 24th. So, um, yeah, if you guys need anything between now and then, let me know. I will get the things updated that need to be updated on um, on your end, um, Blood Main, and then there's a couple other notes that I think I need to send out. I don't have those notes in front of me right now, but something tells me I do. So if I do, I will. And if I don't, I won't. All right, guys. We'll I see. Have yeah, go ahead. a DM question sure. for you. Yeah. Um, I know you said over the past couple games, you've mentioned that you've started like hard prepping for the next round of campaign things. If we are also doing a lot of prepping and character conceptualizing and stuff. Do you want that information yet in case uh, it factors in? Or? So re repeat the very first part of that. You said this is for the next campaign for you the final that one. You've been prepping that stuff already. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's in the works right now. Um, a lot of the background stuff. So the plot is done. Like I'm, I'm finished with that. The sub stories will only get created once you guys give me character stories. Cause obviously that's how we do it. Um, so if you have what you want in there, uh, or how you want to go about your character, yeah, go ahead and shoot me a message uh, with whatever details you have. Um, I know that I've already been working with Lucy and Candice on, um, on how they're going to build, um, and it's a good thing that they did mention it to me because there was a lot of sub-story text that wouldn't have fit well with the, the universe craft, so we kind of refined it together and then built how their characters are going to kind of work out. So, yes, send me what you have. I want to hear it. The I, I don't have together the like the the standards and practices sheet that I send out before you know, we do character creation, but it's going to be very similar to the rest of the campaign series where there's no evil allowed, uh, no evil characters, and chaotic evil is always out. If you become chaotic evil, you become an NPC immediately. Um, so besides that, um, looking at a lawful good paladin, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah, yeah that becomes be a, a problem. Conversation. <laughs> we'll start lawful good and see where that goes uh no i like i love it actually so yeah um yeah send me send me a message with what your interest is um right now yeah, there's a thing for me yeah no way. no no no. i'm not good because i don't have time today i've got more dnd <laughs> tonight and it's but, uh, yeah i've been doing i've got backstory concepts i've got oath stuff i have hey Beautiful. this is a potential horrible enemy here's knives you can stab me with emotionally oh i've spent like six months thinking about this character Beautiful. And uh, we will be playing, uh, so the, the big overhead map that we have, uh, the actual Trinity map um, that I show you guys now for the Prime Material, this is our map, but Trinity, uh, which is the southern island, just so you know, is where it's taking place, uh, primarily. 
Um, it will you guys will have a lot more option as far as traveling outside of this plane of existence and there will be a, probably a good component of planner traveling so exist or coming from another plane is not out of the question nor is anywhere in either of these three continents okay. um, and if you need details own... about anywhere specific just let me know and I'll, I should have most of that already done like probably in the next month or so my only big question right off the bat is are um are your deities the same as the list that I've currently got? They are. Yes, they are. Cool. Cuz that's fairly important. Yeah. yeah, as a paladin? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just uh just a little bit. <laughs> All right, okay, thanks cool. guys. I will finish writing and send you things that you can tear apart and be like no or yes, more evil. Yes. Okay, awesome. Guys, we will uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks then. And if any, if you guys have any questions, uh, just let me know before then. And if you have anything in particular that you intend on doing, like immediately as we go into, uh, actually, yeah. So, uh, Kurt, I'm I'm going to be updating this with all the other flags. I'm almost done with them. I've got like seven or eight more to do. Um, Trinities are done. I just have to get the rest of um, of uh, Trubin shards done, and then I'll update the entire map for you guys. Um, but if you guys ha if you guys know what your intention is going to be for the next like full day and then another full day before we get to Sea Whip, please, please, please send me a message. Especially if it's going to be something like leaving the flotilla, so that I can take that plan for it and then so we can just kind of cook through uh, cook through our time. Yeah, yeah, I had an idea. I'll send in that little group that we have, guys, so we can kind of plan and then tell Kevin our plan. Okay. I'm hearing I have by that I mean to make a dent in five hundred uh, four hundred ninety nine uh, cups of coffee. Pretty much is how that's going, yep. Um, yeah, I'm not going to make the plan this time, by the way. So. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon, then. And uh, if anyone's interested, we're playing some... We're Actually, we're finishing the sub-story tonight. It's the finale of Nowhere to Run, which is the, uh, the plot happening in the same exact timeline right now, but uh, just in up in Empyrean territory, where a bunch of people have been unfortunately trapped by undead. And are currently trying to survive uh, through that, and, and then tomorrow, obviously, we'll be back for D and D in Candice's stream. So, but we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for playing. Hell yeah. Honestly, I thought you were gonna bring us up when you said. Oh, sorry, I'm out. I got stuff to do here on stream. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. I will be messaging shortly to make sure I have my character ready for next campaign then. Yes, yeah, so um, you can you can send messages if you guys want to about character stuff. Um, I haven't decided how it's going to all be fully opened up at this point. Uh, or how we're going to open it up at this point because Candace and I need to discuss scheduling and how that's going to work. I don't think I'm going to run another one until she's done with hers and I'm done with mine for right now. Um, sorry, there's thunder outside. I was just like, what the hell is that? Um, so, uh, so bear with me on that. But if you do have a character concept you'd like to discuss for future campaign and or this upcoming campaign, which will be the final, uh, as far as I can tell, the final main campaign in my series uh for this universe then um feel free to yeah get that over to me and we'll uh we'll see what we can do in the meantime we are raiding it looks like his name is amused hobbs i am unfamiliar with this guy he's a veteran he likes to do role play looks like he's playing some battlefield uh or of some sort and then he has also got adhd listed so this should be interesting uh, he's got a lot of people hanging out right now so let's take the love over to him on behalf of rose all right guys here we go and we'll see you tonight seven to ten we are finishing it it's the finale i promise you if not i don't know what i'll do i'll cry a little bit all right there we go see you guys very soon